Hey everyone, I'm Mike Andes with LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. Today we're gonna be sharing with you the first part of a series that we call Zero Turn, and that is where we go out and we are trying to help landscaping companies make their, their company more profitable and really create the systems to scale up their business. It's something we've been doing with LandscapeBusinessCourse.com and the members there for a long time, the podcast, all the videos we've been sharing, but today we're gonna to give you kind of behind the scenes of when we go out into the field and actually talk to members that have been in the course, seen the material, and now we actually see their company, see their employees, their, the work that they're doing. And so this first episode we wanna show you comes from a little business out of Conroe, Texas. It's just, just south of Houston, and the owner's name is Isaac. And we're gonna jump into his business. We're gonna go, we went there for 48 hours, just two days, and we really wanted to help them create systems to really scale up and make their company successful. So here, let's jump into the first day. This is early morning in Conroe, Texas with IMCO team, which IMCO is the name of Isaac's little business. Here we go. Already know, we've been doing a lot of stuff to like change our name of the company and kind of like prep it for Mike and Josh coming to kind of check things out and help us get things rolling in a more professional direction. So um, we want everything to be real for them so that they can just see what they're working with and then we can just use that to kind of kind of go off and help plan for the future. So Mike has a pretty big uh, company in Washington and do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we got two shops up there. We live right up against the Canadian border. So um, just north of Seattle. Um, and so yeah, I've done it since I was a little kid, kind of like Isaac did. Um, and then Josh is one of my employees there, and so we have a podcast, and of course that Isaac's um, listened to and all that good stuff. So yeah, we have a couple shops there, we have about 18 people, and um, we grow pretty quickly, and so uh, just kind of help you know, Isaac kind of grow and scale this place up, add landscaping, stuff like that, what we'll be doing here. So we, he was one of the winners. There's two of our, our listeners just kind of where we gave it away. So um, we're here two days, and then we go over to Tennessee for two days. So, Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe tomorrow morning, if, you, if we want to do like a discussion together, um, after all stuff we see today. If okay. If you guys have questions or anything like that, too, definitely we can bounce it off each other. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So after seeing Isaac's team in action, we wanted to go back to where he stores all his equipment. And it's kind of a unique setup. The first stop is actually where he stores his trailer and his trucks. And it's actually at a petting zoo. One of his friends has a petting zoo and kind of like a, an event center. And he gives them kind of the side area for a hundred bucks a month. Uh, they're able to park their trucks, their trailers, and all their equipment. So that's where we're going now. He's gonna show me around there. And then we're gonna to go to his office which is actually another little little room that he has where that first team meeting was at. And that's only a hundred bucks a month again. And he rents it from an insurance agent that has some extra space in their office building. Would they eventually allow you to put something here? 
I don't know. Cause I need, I need to ask it. him. Yeah, cause like they have their own plans for growing the park and stuff. Right. Like most of this back space back here is gonna get eaten up by another building they're gonna put in. Do you think eventually they'll say you have to kind of? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But I think before that we're gonna outgrow the place because right. the most we can do is maybe cut down these two trees, which he'd probably be thrilled to have gone, and then clear back that brush a little bit and just have here. three trucks lined up in here. Right. But honestly, like. It's a kid's park. You can't have tons of traffic of mowing crews and stuff. Even though we don't really have much traffic because we all go out in the morning. Yeah, and we come back late in the day, usually after they're closed. Yeah. But uh, but there's some days where you'll come back and this place is just packed. Like this oh, whole really? area is blocked off. You can't park really? your trailers in here. During the summer when kids are off school. Is that yeah, and they have like big events here and stuff. And so so sometimes that's kind of a headache. Dude, you know, it's, but, but, it's, a month. but yeah, it's, it's very rare. It's Man. only twice a year. And then back there we just keep all of our crap, our ladders, and pole saws, and all the crap. So it doesn't rain here, so... Basically from the end of that table on is going to be like other stuff. Right. You might not run and record this. It's like <laughs> recording my butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is all nice. his crap, so... Nice. He is nice though. 100 bucks on a month. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's it, it is a blessing. So one of the things I like that you had and implemented was um, your scoreboard. Mm -hmm. I thought that was super cool. And like, yeah. I like I keep stuff in here for me in India to like always focus on and look at. Yeah. But um, I don't have anything for the guys like at the shop. Yeah. So. So how far is the shop from here? Like five minutes probably. Okay, so they, you meet here and then they drive over there in their own cars. Is that kind yeah, of how it works? Um, we don't normally meet here. I'll, okay. I'll oh, usually okay. go meet up with them at the shop uh, gotcha. just in the mornings and like say what's up and gotcha. wish them a good morning and just make sure they get out of there okay. Yeah. And don't have any like issues with equipment not starting or anything like that. Yeah. And then uh, and then I just come over here and hang out with India and we do work. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Cool. So India, what do you do here? <laughs> I do um, like QuickBooks yep. deposits. <coughs> um, Every random little thing. I'm just Isaac's extra little Cool. Stuff. And then you just start. So when you look at it, like, what's kind of your goal as far as revenue or, like, what do you want out of the business? Um, like, I know you wanted to grow, but, like, what's kind of like the... I always just wanted to grow to a million-dollar company. Like, yeah. In, 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 like, in the view of the world, like, that's such a, like, small company, honestly. Yeah. Like, a yeah. million dollars is nothing yeah. to do in revenue for a company. Yeah. But it's just, it seems like something that not a whole lot of line guys get to. So it's right. always been like kind of the goal. Dude, so one, like, only 1%. 99% of line care would never get to really? a million revenue. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that'd be super cool to be part of the 1% and just to uh, have a good company that's fun to work for and mm -hmm. not be like lawn, lawn care companies are just so like rough and run down and like yeah. don't seem do you like do they're run well and stuff. I just want to yeah. have a a good company that people want to work for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So maintenance is definitely the driver. You yes, got yeah. like this is 2017. Gross is 355. And then do you take your salary out of payroll right now? Is that is your cut out of that, or do you just take bot out of bottom line basically? Like you don't take I, a payroll. I don't honestly take a, don't remember. Okay, but you don't take a salary. Right now? No. Okay. Um, have you ever read Profit First? Yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. That's what, how I kind of run everything. Cool. Like, All right. I literally just have oops, this little calculator, mm -hmm. my deposit calculator. Yep. You just punch it in here, and it gives you all your ratios of what Perfect. to put in your different accounts. Okay. You got your profit account, tax, taxes, expenses, income, and savings. Mm -hmm. And so just every time I do a deposit, I just go and punch it in there, and then I go transfer the money to the accounts. And it works awesome as long as you, as long as you do um, landscape jobs separately, Kay. like according to how you estimate them, I guess. Oh, like uh, basically Kay. taking out your material costs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and stuff like that before you, like, because you're gonna have a huge cost out of your landscape job. It's gonna be, you know, Just probably materials. half of it in yeah. expenses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so the ratios don't really work as much for that. They're close. Yeah. Um, but for bigger landscape jobs, you just do those separately. Cool. And then so on here, you got your installation maintenance. What is sales? What's that considered? Is that just like miscellaneous stuff? Yeah. Okay, got it. Just not like I guess extra like non-maintenance. Mm-hmm. This is like so close to what we were at. 
Like seriously, your numbers are very close to what we were like two and a half years ago, three years. Like where, what happens, you go from 30 a month mm -hmm. to 100 quick if you do stuff, like a few things. Yeah. The number one thing is getting you out of answering phones, emails, and out in the field. If you're able to get to where you're just doing sales, okay. like you, you say like do a sell upsells. If you can be doing that all the time, yeah, that's what gets you like over the, the hump. Okay. And when you do that, then you're able to afford enough people to where if some people leave like they did this year, mm -hmm. that you can kind of get through it. Right, like that's the, that's yeah. the, like it, it, like you've heard me say before. Sales fixes everything, okay, right? Yeah. You know, like at the end of the day, if you're able to get the revenue high enough, you can pay people more; they'll stay longer. Right. Better quality p people come um, if you can pay more when they when they're starting, um, and then uh, you're able to get out in the field and sell more. Like it's just like a it's a snowball effect, yeah. right? Okay. What's most important do you feel as far as to grow? Um, like I'm looking at top line growth really because like. Like I said, if you can fix the top line growth stuff, the other stuff will kind of take care of itself. Like you're not going to see right. an increase in net profit until you get to a million dollars. Like that that number there mm -hmm. is going to stay about the same because you're going to it's going to take a bunch of overhead to get your top line revenue to a right. million. Like this won't go up much. Yeah, that's fine. like that's phenomenal, honestly. If your net profits that mm -hmm. at this stage, like that's really good. But like, don't expect the net really to go right. up until you get over a million. Okay. Uh, because everything from here to a million is getting someone here full time, you know, getting a separate truck for you to be doing sales full time. Right. Like it's just more and more overhead. But to get to the revenue marker of a million, it, that's what it takes. But then once you get over the million marker, mm -hmm. it, you have the system in place to scale. Like it's like okay, we need we have a massive job. You just hire another crew right. and like d deploy them. Right, mm -hmm. it's just like you start thinking in terms of like crews instead of okay, like four or five guys, and yeah. I need them on all these jobs, right? Yeah. Um, like every single day should be between like, especially the two of you should be like getting new business. Okay. That should be the main thing because if if you figure that out, like everything else will work itself out. Like hiring people, people start seeing your trucks more, so you start getting more applicants. Right. Um, and so really like. The hiring thing is definitely something we have to talk about. Like we talked about that last yeah, night, sure. but like I think more so is fixing just like really ramping up sales and production. Okay. Like you like, just want to plan stuff okay. as far as like when you're going to make the jump. Because like starting the business is a big jump. Mm -hmm. Hiring your first person is a big jump. That was easy for you because you bought the company. Yeah, yeah. But like that's usually a big jump. The next big jump is getting you out of the field. Right. And like even out of like emails and phone calls. Yeah, I feel like I'm stuck in like an in-between of that. So. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, and so there's gotta be a jump, so like you don't wanna just do it like randomly. I wouldn't yeah. do it now, right. because you're going in the winter, it's gonna get slower, you're gonna have to, you know, tougher time just filling the schedule for these guys. Yeah. Um, but like come next February, I, I, I would just dedicate, okay, make sure either India or someone can be full-time, mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. even if they do six hours a day, mm -hmm. if they're long, long as you can have office hours and the phone calls go to them, the emails go to them, and then when they have questions, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be like, I, in your mind, like, oh, well, I could just like remember that yeah. and then do it or tell the crew the next morning if someone's so-and-so wants something done at their property, but you have to create the systems to think like a million dollar company, Yeah. right? And so, that's the hard part, and that's what at first can be frustrating for you. You'll be like, "Oh, I could on that email just like told the guys the next morning." Yeah. Well, she doesn't know what to do. Well, like so, th but there's like literally ten different types of emails you're gonna get, and if you can just train India or whoever to like answer them the way you want to be done, it's mm -hmm. so nice. Right. And so I think you'll grow easily twenty percent a year right now, mm -hmm. just based on word of mouth and doing a good job. Yeah, um, it's kind of been what we're doing just yeah. from that. Yeah, but I would say like if you got, you got a website over the winter, um, you were able to commit by February having someone here full time taking emails yeah. and calls, yeah, I could for sure do and that. dealing with like the headache for the first two months, like okay. it is a pain letting go of email, yeah, okay. because like it's stuff that you would be like, oh, that's easy, yeah. or like you know right off the top of your head, and then it takes a couple months for them to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. and then it takes a, like a long time for you to be like all right, they're going to take care of it. Yeah. Sharpening blades, like the bolt mm -hmm. thing, whatever it is. Like you make sure, like usual, we, like we have just a whiteboard where they write down something that's broken. Yeah. And then you just delegate, say one person, like, hey, you're responsible, look at this board and make sure everything's fixed. Or like if, ev if anyone breaks anything, you need to tell so-and-so. Yeah. And that guy is the guy responsible, make sure it's, it's fixed. And if it's not, he needs to tell you. If he can't fix it, like, it needs to go to the mechanic. Yeah. So as far as, because like, I know like the big thing really for you, like you said, like if you got a bunch of work right now, you couldn't even really get it done yeah. like hiring someone that is that gonna happen now or in february oh, yeah. no i 
I would be super happy to hire one or even mm. two people. Right. Even before winter, like I know I could keep two more people busy. As really. Well. Mm -hmm. So. So like, if you know that, you've got to go out and get them. Our winter, yeah, our winters are so short here. Right. So like. I was gonna say, cause you start in February, like, my you have goodness. Like one or two slow months. And right. Then, but even that, you can just fill with extra stuff. You know. Right. There's always extra things to do. Okay. So like, cause like, revenue is obviously driven by how much work is being done and yeah. how much work is being done is how many people are here so like how what are you doing right now to get try to find people um mainly just networking with everybody okay like literally everybody i talk to i i like they know like i let them know somehow like yeah we're looking for like rockstar people to come in and just like learn the business and join our team and how'd you find the guys that are here now um word of mouth. they're friends okay. of workers yeah like okay. we've always just Referrals. had a pipeline of people that know each other right and mm -hmm. like everybody's always been looking for a job especially like in the summertime it's easy to find kids for like summer jobs and they'd really like it so they yeah. stick around for a long time do you incentivize them to give you a a lead on a on someone getting I, hired i do i tell them like you know i'll i'll give you a like if they if, if you refer a friend they make it to through the hiring process then like i'll give you a referral bonus yeah like 100 or 200 bucks yeah you. okay yeah, that's, that's good. Like right now, you don't have a website, and that's the part that yeah. like is tough because mm -hmm. otherwise you'd be pushing like you can market towards that basically. Yeah, yeah. So, and also like this is kind of embarrassing to say, but like I don't know how to make a uh, um like a job application on yep. on yeah. whatever the what, like Squarespace that we use. Oh, um, oh, on there they have forms though, don't they? I or like, don't know. I've been just messing around with it gotcha. trying to figure it all out. I've literally, like, our, our website, I've, I figured it all out myself just for fun. And yeah. Just, like, trying to do everything, but... Like, honestly, over the weekend, you can make it functional. Okay. Like, over one weekend, like, sitting down and just, like, really yeah. focusing on it, whether that be the winter or whatever. Um, but, like, just Squarespace... Google, literally Google Squarespace, Squarespace and the word you want, like, forms. Okay. It'll yeah. be there. Okay. It's super simple, but, like, forms are super helpful because... If you start getting emails to the office, they can have a form right on the home page for estimates, right? Yeah. And then literally, like that's where all our leads are coming through every single day. We have a contact form and an estimate form, and 80% of our leads are coming through that. The other 20% come over the phone. Yeah. And so, uh, because people are looking online and they want to be like within two seconds have someone come out there out to their job, right? Yeah. Number one, you can't do that if you don't have a website. Number two, you can't do that if you're not available to just like run out to their, their property. Yeah. It's so, like we have this thing where we're, from the time they call to the time they have the estimate in their inbox should be less than 24 hours. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? So like um, you really just can't do that if you don't have an office person mm -hmm. and if you don't, aren't able to like get out there and do it yourself. Right. Because they'll accept your estimate if they need the work done, even if it's 20, 30% higher than someone else. But if they need the work done and you're there within 24 hours and they like the experience with the office and it's all been smooth, they'll just take you right off the bat. Um, yeah, like as far as estimates and stuff, like this is the thing. Once you have time, you'll, you'll be able to do way better at this stuff. Like yeah. figuring out the numbers. and like, Right now you're like literally just putting out fires. Like yeah. emails, phone calls. I'm the firefighter right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it's not like it gets better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just becomes like where the fires that you're fighting are actually going like, to help the business grow. Right, right now you're like, everything you're doing is like maintaining the business mm -hmm. and like a few percentage points of your day are spent like growing the company. Yeah. When if you can focus, the more you can focus on hiring and getting new sales, like that's what's gonna make you grow fast. Okay. Right, like we did, we basically went like kind of where you're at, doubled it the next year. Yeah. That big jump is what, when I got two people in the office full time, now we have the third, but like got those people in there, that taken care of, mm -hmm. and then we're just able to focus on hiring. And like this year we hired 11 new people. So like, um, it's once you get over that hump, it's it's game over. Yeah. Oh, as far as oh, well, I was gonna say, as far as hiring someone now, because you don't have the website, it's not like it's gonna be you know top of Google all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah. Um, look everywhere you go for employees. Like literally, if you go to Shipley Donuts and the, someone behind the desk is like super friendly yeah. and like you know could be like cool to work with, like business card on the back. This is my number. If you ever want to work for us, let us know. Right, you don't want to steal from other Sorry, lawn I, care I did that companies. Pizza, that, yeah. I did that the other day, the car wash, started talking to a super nice guy about yeah. his kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, literally everywhere we go, we're like scanning. Right, yeah, good. Athletic, nah, too <laughs> <school. No. laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you do for like if someone like you know you saw that was interested or like they referred someone? What's kind of like the process right now? Um, like if one of our guys refer them. Yeah, we're well, like, hey, like, my friend Joe, his number's this. He wants yeah, to work. Yeah, I immediately hit him up. I'm like, hey, Joe, like this is Isaac Miller with I'm I am Co. Like, um, 
We sent them like a text. Yeah, it's just this Can't. pre-done thing that we already okay. like, then made. We, like Logan said, you're a fantastic guy to, to work with. Mm-hmm. You, like you'd be a great candidate. We have two open positions on our crew right now. I was wondering if you'd be interested in like joining the team or interviewing for the process, see what that looks like. Yeah. And then immediately we'll, yes no. we'll like look them up on Facebook, Instagram. We like yeah. check them out, totally. see what we're doing with, yeah. and then interview here. Yeah. I think just looking at each of the processes and kind of getting a game plan, like if we can leave this weekend, like my goal would be like, okay, what's the game plan for the next mm-hmm. four or five months, right? Yeah. Like over the winter, what are the steps we're going to each month? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, like as far as India where you're like thinking long term or whatever, mm-hmm. but like I would say, you know, Isaac, your next thing is trying to find a number two. Yeah. Like if it's going to be India, like I would have applicants go through her. Like okay. everything, like you can possibly unload on on your number two should be happening. Okay. Um, like this is the, my saving grace that I got Liz, which you probably heard on the podcast yeah, yeah, before. Yeah. Like um, once you get your number two that you can trust, mm-hmm. like just give them everything. Mm-hmm. Like emails, phone calls, like everything should be unloaded. Mm-hmm. Like that's the next step, right? Yeah. And so as long as you know India, yeah, like unless like, you're gonna have kids and like do your own thing in like two months, but like. Um, no. Okay. So like, um, but like, if you can find that person, and then just really trust them one hundred percent, it'll help you so yeah, much. Dude. And then and then realizing too that that person can leave tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Right, like Liz could leave tomorrow, yeah. and we have to figure it out. And then so like the next step after you trust that person so much is like covering your butt mm-hmm. and anti fragile. Like thinking, okay, what if they left? Oh, sick. We should get some office assistants. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now we have two office people that is basically learning her entire job, right? right? And it's not like I think she's going to leave. It's just the fact that if she did, I don't want the company to fall apart, yeah. right? Same thing, like, you just basically work your way down, right? So like, for right now, like, if you, you know, got hit by a bus, things would not be good, right? I so it's like, that. how do we outsource stuff to India or the crews, like, to make sure that stuff keeps continuing to run? And then after that, as you grow, it's like, okay, India is now the person we're trying to outsource stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, how do we get office assistants? And that's how the company grows. Right. That's how the organization should grow. Is like literally just literally figuring out what can I outsource, hand out with number two, mm-hmm. and then number two starts handing that stuff down and it just becomes bigger, okay. right? Because you start thinking about the bigger picture stuff. Like now like Liz does all, like almost all the interviewing process and everything. I come in to give them a, a job offer, oh, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to get her out of like emails and like sales calls and she should be like focusing 100% on project management. Oh, I see. Cool. So, um, it's just that evolution of the business, mm-hmm. but it starts with you outsourcing stuff to her. Right. And I think like, honestly, India is your person. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm not, I'm 100%. just, like really. <laughs> and so, um, having a female presence too in like a male dominant, in, dominated industry is super powerful for the guys too. Yeah. Um, cause they'll come back and cry to Liz, but they, they would never say that stuff to me. Right. And so <laughs> it's super powerful. It really is. Okay. And so like eventually it'd be really nice if, as you grow that this office ish becomes where they are in and out every single day mm-hmm. so they can communicate with whoever's at the office yeah be like oh that broken window and oh this piece of equipment and so like right now it's not like they're coming and able to write up on the board mm-hmm. you know what's going wrong unless as you have it at the shop maybe i don't know yeah no so we this is kind of silly but like we just bought a, a like a tool shed yeah. to start keeping stuff in so that we have an area that we can keep like a we scoreboard were gonna put like a whiteboard for the guys and cool. stuff cool. because they'll be in and out of there for making sure the trucks will oil mix and string and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so they'll have chances to like look in there. Mm-hmm. So I would eventually love to like have everything on one property like y'all have your shop, you know, where you, your yeah. trucks go in, your guys come into the office and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we'll be looking into that in that probably the near awesome. future yeah. because it needs to happen. Yeah, like I would love tomorrow if I do talk to them to kind of be the person, like a third party to say, hey, we need to get stuff off Isaac's plate, right? Like we got to, like if you want to be here long term as an employee or whatever, like yeah. even if they're not here long term, they yeah. go get another job. If you can always be thinking what kind of take off the employer's plate, like you're going to be successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, like this company's only going to grow if we can get stuff off Isaac's plate. Mm-hmm. Like that should be like everyone's mo- most important thing in their mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, Isaac was sharpening the blades last night at 11 o'clock. <laughs> I should have done that. Right. Yeah. Right. Like everything that's not hiring and sales should they should be thinking like what can i do to make that but like at the end of the day off out, you know outsourcing the stuff that you're doing to other people it's gonna hurt the bottom line because yeah. it's gonna be more yeah. hours it's gonna be more overhead like no one get you don't get more revenue by having the blade sharpened right right so it's definitely a cut 
but it's just thinking more long term as far as like what you want the company to be and you do not want to be changing blades yeah, yeah, yeah like sure. that's not your job right yeah. so if you can start to make them think like that it's like you will love them so much more yeah. <laughs> and um and they start to feel part of the process like if we just have you know everything's just going great right they're like cool you know isaac's making more money but if they're if they buy into the process of what's happening and like they were part of that um, and they start to see more people coming in, like the company's growing. Oh, I might actually be able to like build a family here mm -hmm. if I can, if we continue to grow and I can support Isaac and see that like stuff's happening here mm -hmm. and like share them. I would do, I would share them all these numbers. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't I, have any problem with it. Not right? tomorrow. I'm just saying like, like I'd like take them to dinner and be like, Hey, these are the numbers. This is what we're making. And um, this is what I want to do. You know, I want to make this a place where you can grow into and you don't have to go get another career and become an electrician or whatever. Right. Like, I want to make this a place. Um, but in order for that to happen, you got to ha have more yeah. revenue, right? Like, basically, if you can take one of your employees and make them the role model of, like, what they could become, that's yeah. the goal. So, like, if you can find someone, once you say you get eight people mm -hmm. working in the career, because you need that money to yeah. kind of, like, a good, you know, project manager. Yeah. Um, if you can have that person that they can be like, I could be him in a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, uh, he's making 20 bucks an hour. I could be making that if I stick around, right? And have that one person that they're kind of like idolizing, like they're, that's, they want their job. Yeah. And then they'll stick around longer. And so that's like we implemented, like after one year they bump to a certain, pay. it's a like scheduled pay every, up until two years. Right. Right, because okay. I want them two years. I know if I can keep them two years, I can usually find something else for them to do that'll keep them long term. Yeah. Right. And two, you'll snuff out people that want two months worth of work in the hiring process mm -hmm. when you're like, oh, you're, well, for you guys, it'd probably be 12, right? Is that what you start people at? Yeah. So, hey, okay, we're starting at 12, but after six months, it goes to 13. After 12 months, it goes to 14. Like, just right. like, and then, then you can look at them and they're like, oh, if they're like, me, I need more up front, then you're like, oh, they're probably not gonna be here long term. Yeah. Yeah, right. I see. If they're like that, that's legit. Like I would love to. I want to be here for two, three years, and I want to get to fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want all of your pay to be based upon um, just staying around. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh, I've been here five years. I should. They owe me X amount because I've just been here. Yeah, that was another thought I had. Yeah. We but then too, like if you create a culture where that's just not acceptable, right. that kind of stuffs it out. But like we just have scheduled pace up to 20 bucks an hour. And then after that's all just performance based. Okay. Or we're going to figure out like something that they want to do that is within the company that might be different. Mm -hmm. um, but like you can't do any of that until you have the scale. Right. right? Okay. Like with four or five people, you can't afford to have ma mid-level managers. You can't yeah, afford yeah, yeah. to pay them anything. So that's why it's like next year's the big jump for you guys. Yeah. It really is. Like if you can look at it as like, that's the year you take off mm -hmm. and it's going to hundred percent come down. Everything that you take care of right now needs to be switched to India. Mm -hmm. Like if that switch happens, it, everything will take care of itself because you have mm -hmm. so much more time to hire people and then you'll have so much more time to upsell people right. and get more clients and work on the website. Like the website is like the thing you should be working on, right? Not phone calls and emails, right? right. Or even India working on the website. Like it's Squarespace is like, how mm -hmm. hard is it? Right? So we had already talked quite a bit the first day with Isaac and then his sister India, who was kind of his office manager. But I wanted to kind of sit down and go over a very specific plan as far as what they were going to do once we left. I didn't want to just, you know, in that 48 hours were with them. There's a lot of information, a lot of tips, a lot of things they could improve on. But I want to give like a six month very actionable step guide that they could follow once we left. So we're going to go sit down now at lunch and we're going to go exactly through what they're going to do over the next six months to improve their business. So I'm going to let you fill this out. Okay. But I think you just need to kind of talk through each you know month and what we're kind of striving for. So like, I think, you know, by February, we can even work our way backwards. Like the main thing is just kind of like, okay, what are we going to do for the next two weeks? What are we doing in October? What's November? And like literally two or three, like kind of, key performance indicator goals, like action items, and then revenue too. Like revenue should always be attached to like kind of like your growth. Yeah. And so be like, okay, we're doing X, Y, and Z, but the, the reason is because the revenue needs to go here, right? And so two, like keeping in mind, like do you take a, I would, I think it'd be a good idea if you figure out what you, you probably heard me say this in the podcast, figure out what you need financially, personally, and start taking a salary. Okay like a set amount that like just comes out of the account yeah like a weekly like if it's a thousand bucks or 500 whatever that yeah. is and then you know and then that's up to you to figure out like the, obviously the less you pull the more your company is going to grow right that's a personal decision of yeah, what you yeah, want to yeah. do right but like 
figure that number out, I think, because then everything that's left over, you know it's for growth. When it happens to, it's not so much even the fact that like you're giving yourself a salary. Mm -hmm. It's more of almost a psychological, like this is the business, yeah. this is my personal life. And the more you can like completely separate, separate those, the better. Okay. Like I li literally look at like, when I go to Augusta, like that's my job, mm -hmm. even though I'm, I'm the owner, that's my job, I get paid for it. Um, and then like, Personally, I'm completely separate. Like, I yeah. will never take money out of the, the bank account without like some sort of justification from the yeah. office, right? Like, they hold me to everything because they're doing the QuickBooks and they're doing all the. So, right. like, if I'm gonna take money out, they they're gonna have to know what's going on. Yeah. So, um, and when you do that too, it's like, okay, this is my money to play with at home. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I got a bunch of money in the bank. It's like, no, that's the company's. Yeah. But I think it's a really good idea to get a salary and to delineate personal and then business. Okay, yeah. Even for you psychologically, be like, okay, I'm gonna make a thousand bucks this week no matter what. Cool, like I'm covered. Yeah. Now let's go attack. Like like everything after that is a complete like business. Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. Heck yeah, I can do that. And that way you can be really public with the guys and open with them like where the money's going. Whether or not you tell them how much you make doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't It's care. more about like how much is in the company and what do we have to play with and then involving them in the decision. Because mm -hmm. they'll treat that equipment a whole lot nicer if they were involved in the decision to buy it. Right, right? that like, makes sense. They know there was 20 grand in the pot. They know that they decide they're gonna spend a bunch of that on equipment. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be much more like taking that personal to take care of it instead of like running it like they just stole yeah, it, yeah. right? So um, just something I was thinking about. Okay, But um, cool, love it. I think um, as far as like, you know, some of the stuff we discussed this morning, like the, the website's important. Yeah, I think kind of from what you were like, what you've been going off of, I say we probably need to work on the website first. Yeah. Just get that finished. Yeah. So that Even if you could say like, say by the end of October, that's your action. Like you, what I would do is like action items and then like a revenue goal. Okay. So yeah. like uh, for October, I think it should be, it's not going to be completely polished, but it's going to be good yeah. enough to where you could be like proud to send someone to yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, you know, over the course of the winter, fine tune the thing like crazy. Like once yeah. you're done, send me the link. Okay. And I'll just give you like five more things to do and then like do that for a month and then I'll fi find five more things to do. Yeah. It's like literally like the small little little stuff that actually gets you on Google, like the keyword stuff. Like literally writing blog posts does nothing for your customers, no one reads them. Yeah. But it's all about keywords, right, for Google. And so, um, you know, feel free to look at ours and kind of like emulate some of it. Yeah. But like the blog, no one reads that stuff. but it drives so much traffic to our website and that drives it up to Google. Yeah. Right? Funny. So like if you're searching in our area anything to do with like weeds or lawn care, just in general, like learning, like how to, like regular homeowners, they're gonna find right. our website. And so that drives traffic like crazy. So I would say like just a working website that looks good, nice quality pictures, um, that kind of represents you and your company. Yeah. So another thing, write this down, uh, test my site Google. Just put that into Google and there's a website where basically Google allows you to put your URL in and then it gives you a score and like tells you areas to make your site faster and things. Right. And basically says why they're not putting you at the top. Oh, okay. So it'll be like, hey, your images are way too big. Or like you have uh, JavaScript, which is like videos like that that mm -hmm. sometimes don't load. It's like, it slows it all down and Google will not put like junky websites like that right. at the top, okay. right? Like you know, when you look at on a Google search and you took, look on the top right, it says like one page of like three million, mm -hmm. you have to scan all those websites to figure out which one to put at the top. Right. Okay. So if it's not fast, they don't even deal with it, right? right. So you gotta make it where they can scan really quickly, see the keywords, they're hyperlinked to like your homepage, to your Facebook page, to YouTube videos, like all this other stuff. Yeah. So once you make this, then go back and listen on the course about stuff that I talk about. Okay. Because I talk all about like the hyperlinks, keywords in the the footer and header of the pages, like all that stuff. Basically, once you create a My Google page, yes. My, have you made one? No. No. So definitely do that when you make yeah. the website. Okay. Um, be done in October. In well? October, yeah. It takes two seconds. Just go to, um, just do a. Uh, business page Google, and you will need an address for it, so I'd probably put your business, yeah, your office one. Okay, yeah. Right, like, cause that's where like, people could mail or like call, things like yeah. that. Um, it'll show up on Google Maps, so that's why like having them together is kinda nice, cause people will, will show up. Yeah. Like, people will show up at one time, eventually, to this place. Okay. They'll try to find you, you they probably won't be able to find yeah. you, they'll be like, oh, I must be lost. Yeah. Um, but like, my Google page is super important, because like right now, let's do it right now. 
Hanro Lawn Care. So, notice what pops up first. I'm crossing my fingers, making sure I'm actually right on this, but almost all the time. All right, so Google AdWords, that's first. Yeah. Right? So that's why you want to be there if you can, if you want to pay for it. But this is what's important. These are not websites. These are Google Plus pages. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's why having a Google Plus page is instantly getting you at the top of organic search. Like, this, look at this guy. One yeah. review, but he's, he's at, at the top. He's at the he top. probably has done some con Google AdWords. He probably has a bunch of, of keywords on his website. Mm -hmm. He gets to the top with a call button right next to it. You want to make sure that's going to the office that gets picked up and yeah. not you on a mower, yeah. right? But then you scroll down, that's where I got that. Oh, They're yeah, the yeah. first organic website right. after Google, Google, um, uh, Google like Maps. Google yeah. So they're the people you want to emulate. Okay. I would watch what they're doing on their website. Look at all these words, fertilization, maintenance, schedule. This description of their website is nothing to do with what they actually do. It's about creating all these words in here in like a short amount of space, huh, right? It's okay. so like all these words, like they just mentioned grass like a gazillion times, fertilization, maintenance, fertilization schedule. Like all of this stuff is yeah, what people okay. are searching, yeah. right? Like they're searching fertilization Conroe. Where would that be like on your website though? Like where would you put that? Listen to what's on the course because I go through yeah. all of those. Okay, cool. Um, but emulate someone like them because they're doing it right. They're getting the top. This is the thing though. When I see the first, like this is the number one in your area, this is a, um, not an actual company. So this is a, yeah. one of those ones that's like a conglomerate, kind of like or something like that. Like if they could get to the top, it means it's like fair game for you to get to the top because they have to do they have to do search and optimization for the entire country. Oh, yeah, you can yeah, yeah. really focus just on Conroe, huh. right? So, like even looking at these people, you can beat these guys, get these guys no problem. Yeah. If I'm, you get a decent website, you're gonna be up for here. You're gonna be right in this area. Like if you look at this guy, right. his description's horrible. He just has his phone number and like this. Like you can beat this easily. Okay. Like I. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're like, like you should basically just dominate Conroe. Okay. Like focus on Conroe. Yeah. If anyone has anything to do with lawn care, you should pop up. Like For if sure. you create this now and then work on it a little bit over the winter, you'll be right in here. Like you. These are all conglomerates that have to do search and optimization the entire world over. Right, you can okay. focus on Conroe and just nail it, nail it. Like keyword, 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 and keep, get these guys no problem. Okay. Cool. If you can get ten, if you can get ten, yeah, five star reviews on Google. So um, I don't think I have it. So just search how to make a send a link to someone and make them give you a five star review, because it's a little bit challenging to get like explain to them. Oh, hey, search my company, find my Google Plus page, click review. There's a way to do it where you send them a link. They open it up and automatically opens up a five star review, and they just gotta type in their review. Um, but either way, get 10 of those and you'll be up here fast, like, okay. like that. Um, that'll drive, just doing that would drive huge amounts of traffic. Right. But I think by October, you gotta have a, a decent website with a Google Plus page, okay, cool. right? Um, I think by end of November, we gotta have hired at least one more person. Yeah, for sure. Right? First, I think then so. in September, we should hire someone in September. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I'm like, We've Regardless, whether we say yeah. November or whatever, like yeah. as soon as I can hire somebody, I'm gonna yeah. be hiring and I'm gonna yeah. be looking even today while yeah. we're out. I know? think we should hire one one person here and then make another one before spring to get yeah. a second one. And then these are things that we, you know, whether it be on a whiteboard or whatever, that you're checking off yes. and like, okay, yeah. this we'll month we have to do office. this, right? Yeah. Because like otherwise, it's just, like you were saying, there's so much stuff to do, like you're just not gonna get anywhere. Like yeah. I still do this every single month. And yeah. it changes, like literally every month I'm planning out the next six months and action items for each, and it changes. But like, I gotta be like on top of that because otherwise there's just so much junk to do, right? Yeah. Like, oh, we gotta hire people, we gotta get more business, we gotta do estimates, we gotta do like lawn pro, like there's so much stuff going on. Yeah. And so, you know, if you have this person, you have this person, by February you're gonna have six people in the field. Mm -hmm. I would say by the end of February. Six and, solid people. Right, yeah. six solid people. I'd say another person in February. Yeah. Like just get yes, in the I habit agree. of like, always hiring. I never look at employees as like a cost. Okay. It's always like a way to make money. And if they're great and you gotta pay them more, th like someone that does 12 bucks an hour, you pay them 12 bucks an hour, they might produce $30 an hour's worth of work. A good employee will produce 60. Oh, I see, I see. So like, it's easy to be like, oh, I don't know if I can handle like 17, 18 bucks an hour yeah. instead of 12. 
But look at it, 12 versus 18, you're paying someone 50% more, mm -hmm. right? But it's six bucks. Yeah. And they're gonna literally present, produce probably 50% more per hour, which is gonna be like $20 differential. Right. A good hire is so worth the money. Yeah. Um, so we got one more employee in this September. That's a big deal. Yeah. And then that we'll do it. We'll figure out some like taglines off of what we're gonna do to do that. Yeah. October is finishing the website. Yeah. Um, I think somewhere in here we gotta figure out really implementing Lawn Pro better. See, I'd say Lawn Pro should be integrated. You know, I wouldn't say it has to be done right away because you might not be able to like actually start using it. Mm -hmm. But like, if it, you can get it by you know end of October, it'd be great. You know, it'd be able to implement Lawn Pro. Yeah. with crews like even if they get to the point where hey now we're using it for scheduling yeah and i know it integrates with quickbooks i haven't used it since it has so i don't know how seamless that is but even like expenses and things like that it's nice because it does a lot of the job costing stuff because it's all together now right yeah. like you got your customer profile and it keeps track of like all their jobs that they've scheduled like it's just super nice keep it all in one place i think by november you need to have she needs to have access to email Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. And then I, I think you should be shooting for like mid next year to have it off your phone. Don't do it for February because that's when you get crazy busy yeah. and you're going to be like, going to feel like out of control kind of thing if you don't have it. But shoot for like next June to take it off your phone. So when you go home, it's like unplug. Because this is the problem is like when people don't, go ahead. He's thinking about a company phone. He's been saying that for months and months and months. I just don't know what the best option is. I think I can literally just get another cell phone, mm -hmm. yeah. like on our plan for like 50 bucks a month. Well, what you can do, so online you can get what's called a VoIP phone, V-O-I-P. Okay. Um, and what that is, is basically a number that people call and then online you decide where that call goes. So literally you could have your cell phone, you could have your cell phone. They will never know your number. It forwards it to the, a number. And then what you can do is make calling rules where like, okay, if she doesn't pick up, then it comes to my cell phone number. If it doesn't go to, if my, if I don't pick up, then it goes to voicemail. Yeah. yeah. That's a good segue before it's like, never call my phone now. And eventually that's what you want. Cause like what happens with too many lawn care business owners is like they have it on their phone. And then when they come to work, they're getting all their messages and stuff. They go home, they're getting messages and emails and stuff. And they're never present either. Or when they come to work, it's like, they're still dealing with family stuff. And then when they come home, they're dealing with business stuff. Yeah. And it's nice when you be like, okay, when I'm home, I'm home. Yeah. And like, it's why I my, think my wife would appreciate that. <laughs> and then realizing that like, when you're at work, she might not be able to hold of you because now you're doing all that work. Mm -hmm. But like, usually most people, when you're with them, they just want you to be present, right? Yeah. Like a wife, kids, like, mm -hmm. you know, okay, this, that's that's work. Yeah. It's done now. It's not. I'm not gonna get phones and emails. I'm with you guys. But when I go to work, like, I gotta focus on that. Yeah. Right. And then usually they're more, like my parents, that was the big thing. I was like, look, I'm not going to have my cell phone at the table. When I'm with you guys, I'm 100% with you. But when I'm at work, 16 hours a day, I need to focus on that. Like, yeah. I'm not with you. Right. Like, yeah. And so just trying to be like all in on one or the other. Like, obviously, there's times you're going to be juggling both. Yeah. But um, it's, it's super liberating personally. But then like she gets control. And you got to like let that go. Yeah. Like the more you can flush that out, like the better. Okay. It's the hardest thing to do once you start letting, it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen next spring. There's going to be customer complaints, yeah. stuff happening, and you're like, I got to get it back. And you just got to let it go. Uh, when should we implement the phone, do you think? Like getting, getting I, a separate number? Yeah. Like, I, would, I would actually, or? I would do that in the winter when it's slower. Okay. Yeah. Implement it and just come into your phone still. So get a phone number that you would be advertising. At first, some people still have your cell number, so like whatever. Um, but I like on my cell number, I have a voice mes message that says, if you want to call the office or no, I say like, this is my candies, but if you want to call Augusta, the office number is, okay, and yeah. I give it to him because I'm not going to get to as fast and I don't want to deal with it. I want, I want them to get used to calling the office. Yeah. Right. And even if that's you, they're yeah. calling the office number right. at first, eventually you should not answer that phone. Right. You should that like the call forwarding should never come to you because okay. that's just more fires. Right? Yeah, it yeah. should never come to you, but at first, I would just get VoIP, V-O-I-P. You can get that through Google Voice. Um, Phonebooth.com is what we use, but it, it's a little more pricey. Like Google Voice is pretty cheap um, and it works just fine. And you can answer that from anywhere. So it's pretty cool. Like just search VoIP, V-O-I-P, phone lines, uh, and it's all based on the internet. Okay. So uh, super easy to do the call forwarding. Google Voice, there's tons of tutorials on how to do it. Um, but you want that. You want them calling the office and you want India picking it up as much as possible. 
have it set up where it's calling the office, and if, if you need that to sell her cell, that's fine, because they don't have her number. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is just don't call out from your phone. Call yeah, out yeah. from like Google Voice from the number. Right. So you can just get the app on your phone and yeah. call out from it, and it looks like it's coming from the the office. Okay. Um, but then it can always be coming to you anytime. Okay. And then you can make call rules as far as hours, so like when yeah, she's in school. What I was wondering. Yep. Because so like, when you're in school, you can block out those hours so it goes straight to him. Okay. Cool. Yeah, like I think once you get the systems in place, you can put like your phone number in your trucks. Yeah. The, the website's gonna drive traffic and take, start taking those other small jobs that turn into big stuff. Right. Like the little cleanups that come in, it's kind of annoying, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden they're asking for like a $40,000 paver install and a yeah. wall and all that stuff and then you start figuring it out, right? Like um, you're never gonna get those jobs without like stuff on your trucks and stuff right. like that. You're just not. Okay. Um, and so like I think you need to buy, by February, you gotta have stuff on your trucks. Okay. Like contact information and should be, you know, blaring that you're insured and bonded or whatever you are if you're going commercial route especially, right? Um, it should have some sort of invitation for an estimate or something like that on the back, on those back ramps. Those are great for getting a yeah. corrugated stuff. If someone pulls up behind you, it should be like a 20 second ad right in front of them, right? Yeah. So, um, revenue, the more you can get out of even the billing thing, the better. Well, like Out of the what? Out of billing and oh, invoicing. Okay. Like set up structures for her to follow. Like, okay. hey, if they're overdue 30 days, then you have a phone call. If they're overdue 60 days, then you email, like collections 90 oh, yeah, days, whatever. Yeah. Set that up and yeah, then- Yeah, we don't have a process for that, right. really. Checks, like she can sign checks. Yeah. She can take it to the bank on her way to school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever we can take off Isaac's plate needs to happen, okay. right? And if that's taking checks to the bank, that's 10 more minutes he could have been like walking in on one property and giving them a flyer that becomes a $40,000 yeah. job, right? right? Yeah. So, um, thinking in terms of that, instead of, oh, I'm gonna have to pay someone an extra hour this week because they're gonna be taking checks to the bank for me, is like where you're gonna make the separation from like business owner and this is your job moment, yeah. right? So, 30,000, we're gonna another person though, so October, do you have a lot of upsell stuff in October? October, we should have, um, oh yeah, that's another thing, we'll have, we have like one landscape job I'm almost positive we'll get. We are, already doing part of it um, tomorrow, on Friday. You're starting it? Yeah, we're just doing like some dirt work with some sod. It's like super straightforward and yeah. simple and it's like 2,500 bucks. Yeah. Um, and then they want us to do like the flower beds now and yeah. stuff too, so I'm pretty sure I could What's your profit margin on that kind of work? Like a $2,500 work, do you know? Like a yeah, 50, 60, 70, what do you got? It's like, it's, it's basically Good. 50%. Yeah. Like I just, kind of figure like all of our costs and then double it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I think by changing to IM Co, this is what's gonna give you the chance to do this. And that is, I would push you in this direction after seeing all these guys riding yeah. around. It's gonna be tough to compete with those guys. Yeah. On residential especially, even commercial. Mm -hmm. What I would do is like, okay, we got our mowing. We got what, $400,000 a year that we're, is gonna be mowing, yeah. right? That's solid. Like we probably are close to that, right? But then we took that, we're like, okay, we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna keep our clients, raise the prices to where we kind of keep them at like, we have a couple hundred clients. Yeah. We're gonna keep that, cool, keep people busy, and then we're gonna focus on landscaping. Mm, the yeah. $2,500 job, that's our wheelhouse, man. I'll yeah. knock a $25, like we'll do two of those a day. Really, Right, yeah. and that's the money, mm -hmm. right? Um, you get two of those, then you got several mo crews mowing, and all of a sudden, like, you're off to the races, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead of thinking like, oh, next month we have a $2,500 job, it literally will be every single day. Yeah. And so yeah, I would yeah. focus, cause like, it's gonna be really tough for those guys, all your competitors to be doing $2,500 jobs. They're not gonna be able to manage the jobs, they're not gonna have someone scheduling it. Like, the systems you create is what's gonna differentiate yourself. Not even right. the trucks and the uniforms. Like, that's cool, yeah. but it's not gonna differentiate yourself. <laughs> what will is like, <clears throat> they cannot go to do a $2,500 job because it'll take them from their other modes. Right, It'll yeah. take them from all their like recurring modes. Like they can't do it. Yeah. You can get those jobs yeah. by having the website, having the appeal for a residential customer, having your number on your trucks, putting cleanups, landscaping, and lawn care mm -hmm. instead of just like mowing, right? And IM Co is gonna work perfect for that. Right. It's a, like the Co thing be, sounds big. Yeah. Right, it sounds like a bigger, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you could easily go into install. Yeah. Really. Like you know what? I wouldn't push you into like pavers and retaining walls. Like don't go search that stuff out right now. Mm -hmm.
focus on like the soft skate stuff. Yeah, the bolt, yeah, yeah. mulch bags, we're, we're rock. Good at soft skate stuff. We can like you. We can knock it out simple, really man. fast. Simple, man. Super simple. Simple. You have the equipment already yeah. for it. Like people don't have trucks and things. They're gonna want you to do it because they can't go like to the quarry or whatever and pick up yeah. rock. You're gonna have to set up suppliers for like things like rock and gravel and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know. And then the next step is when you do get a shop, you have bins. Yeah, of yeah. Of those materials, That'd right? Be awesome. Right. And then it just makes it so much more efficient. You get wholesale pricing, mm -hmm. and then you sell it to the customer at retail pricing in your estimate yeah so if we do an estimate for 10 yards of bark mulch to install yeah we charge you know 10 hours to install it but we charge 10 yards of bark mulch at retail prices even though we got it at wholesale price yeah because we warehouse it at our shop mm -hmm. right so um i think uh you know as far as october does it go up like i don't know what you were um yeah it'll go up some in october yeah. so i'd say like 35, 37, yeah. probably, probably a good guessment. Okay. Um, Let's do 35. It could even be... Let's do 35, okay. 37 in November, because that's your last month of, of uh, yeah. mowing, right? And by then you'll have a website, which isn't going to be instant or anything like that, but right. it's there. Um, I would try to reinvest whatever you make here into branding on the trucks. Like, even if it's like two grand. To get the couple trucks, like, logos all over them, number, phone, phone number, email i uh, started uh, phone number and website at least yeah with the truck with the i am thing okay cool right like um the i am co thing is a cool thing i like it a lot yeah i really think that's a legit way you put to position it instead of i am mowing cool thanks man and i think that you have a solid lawn care base mm -hmm. and i would leave it alone okay like, yes, you could go down the street, like I was saying, and it's, you never yeah. neglect it. Like, yeah, yeah, never yeah. neglect that yeah. first stream of income. Right. It's gonna start coming to you, like, organically, and we're still growing our lawn care. Yeah. And but it'll come with landscaping and stuff, too. Exactly. Gonna need to you do the landscaping, and then you say, oh, by the way, we install that $2,500 landscaping yeah. in order to maintain it every month, and pull weeds and trim the bushes, it's yeah. like 100 bucks. Right, like, you just sell yeah. it all day long. Um, if you've done a good job, they're gonna take it every time, right? Yeah. They're not even gonna go price shopping. And so I think that's your differentiating. I, I think you're having a really tough time doing what you're doing with all these other guys around here. Okay, um, yeah. Like it's standard to have kind of your setup as far as like the trucks without logos, the mowing, yeah. getting like, it's very standard. And so to differentiate yourself, it's gotta be the systems you have in place. Mm -hmm. Like she's your selling point. Yeah. The office, someone to schedule, someone that they can communicate with. Um, that's like gold. That's what's gonna differentiate you. So, you know, November, we got the, what's that sorry to say? Higher. Higher, but actually scratch it out. We scratched that one. We did one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that one's out. You got, that's going to be a big one. India, access to email. When she gets that, you're going to have time on your hands. Okay. So this needs to be a month when we really go hardcore sales because you got the website here. You got someone else employed. Now let's really fill up your, your cause this is going to be the last month of mowing. Yeah. You got to fill up your winter schedule, right? So this is when it's going to be hardcore tree, like going after tree work. It's going to be going all your upselling. You're going to start in that as soon as possible, obviously, yeah. once you get this employee, cause you got to fill their schedule right off the bat with upsell stuff. But now it's like, okay, how do we keep them busy in these two months? Right? When there's yeah. no more mowing. And so this month should be like really every avenue that we've talked about everywhere from walking into these commercial places yeah. to emailing every single one of your existing customers with uh, opportunities for landscaping, giving them a discount if they do it during uh, December and January. Hey, 20% off. Like you're keeping your guys busy. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Right? Like we do not make a penny during the winter. We're wanting to keep the guys busy. Like I'm willing to lose money. We will lose money. We lose money every single winter to keep them on. Yeah. But I'd much rather be able to say, I'm gonna give you full time work year round if you want it, because I'll get better guys. And yeah. it just comes down to whether you're in this in this for the short term mm -hmm. or if you're gonna think long term, right? Right. And if you're thinking long term, you gotta keep your guys yeah. at all possible. Like, you want them to succeed and go on and do greater things, but if, like you want to grow with them, you gotta keep them during the winter. Yeah. So that's big. That's big. So like walk-ins, emailing existing customers. I would start doing a monthly newsletter. Yeah. See, I, I would love to do that. Started that. And yep. Stopped it. It's like yeah. have a video or have like a crazy picture of the team. And then just like say something about, or a couple pictures of the jobs you've done. Mm -hmm. You know, make it into a, you know, on Photoshop or whatever, um, and make something cool, a slideshow real quick, whatever it is. Make it more like that. Funny, interesting. If you hire new people, it's not a bad idea to do a bio on them yeah. on that newsletter, right? Yeah. 
and creating that connection and making sure that I guarantee you most everyone your customers think you do mowing only and they go hire someone else for that landscaping. Yeah. Right? And that's what you want for all these other guys. They want, you want to be the landscaper guy and let them do the lawn care. Yeah. Right? I but guess. for now, I guarantee you they don't know you do tree trimming and landscaping and installation of soil. They're going to go get someone else to do it. Yeah. Making sure the newsletter is the way of making sure they, they know. So this one's really good. Monthly newsletter starting that. You probably have like how many emails right now? A couple hundred? Because you have a bunch of commercial clients. I don't know. I don't know. No, like from clients? Yeah. Honestly, no. You don't have um, any emails? No, like we maybe a couple a day. Like. No, 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 no. Sorry. I mean, how many email addresses do you have? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Um, yeah, uh, I don't Almost know. Almost everyone's email. Yeah. Honestly, I have no idea. You don't really have an email? Yeah. Once you have their email, like right now it seems like way far off, but literally it'll be with next winter you'll be thinking about this, and that's automation with emails. Like when you send an e when you send an estimate, like right now it's kind of like, okay, let's hope they open it up. On Lawn Pro you can see if they open it up. You can see if they've read it. Yeah. If they haven't, you're like, oh my word, maybe I got the wrong email address. Yeah. But then... Quick looks are the same thing. It it's does. Nice. Good. But like the thing is, eventually you start thinking about, okay, how do I automate the follow-up? So like right now, after 24 hours, they're gonna get a, an email from us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do it. It's all automated. 24 hours, they get an email. It has a video in there, like as if it's customized from our team and all that stuff. Three days later, it follows up again. Like any questions, we need to get, you know, we're, our schedule's booking out, call us back. And then another seven days, another one. And then three weeks later, to like, hey, did you forget about this? Did you get someone yeah. else? We just need a no to take you off our schedule. Yeah. Right, like all that follow up, is usually hours and hours of her time. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're not so worried about that as much as just getting the work, right? right? But I think for now, this is important, like really hitting sales hard in November. Literally, if it's going up to houses, like their trees are falling over mm -hmm. and being like, hey, I, we can trim these and it'll be X amount and we can do it in the next week. Yeah. Like, if that's what you have to do, but like, you're doing all of this so that you can do this. Okay. And like when I'm talking to the team, if I do it tomorrow morning, like that's the whole goal is like, not just to get you like to go vacation. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. get him out of this to do this, which is gonna be the thing that grows the company. So, okay, so real quickly, so I know you gotta go to India. Yeah, what 10 is it? 10 till, five till? Oh yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. So sale, that's a big thing. Um, December, phone, I think you do this here. Like, when, you do, when you give her the email, mm -hmm. get the phone set up in November. Okay. Cause that's gonna allow you to get out here more. Okay. Right? And you know, you know what's great about having an office that you can refer to is when you're at the job, you they'll ask you like, what's the pricing? You're like, well, how much is it gonna cost? Like, what's yeah. the approximate? So you, right? you can literally say, I don't know how you're estimating yet, but like, you yeah, can literally I say, don't I don't know. Like yeah, you can literally say, I don't know. I'm just gonna send this information back to the office and the office will get back in touch with you. If you have any questions, talk to the office. Like. It's, a, it's called third party close, yeah. right? And then you can actually use it to come back to their property sometimes, like the office told me, or like the office says, and like like no one knows I'm the owner when I'm going yeah. to jobs. Be and Because if I did, if they didn't know I was the owner, I'd be there every time there's a complaint. Mm -hmm. I'd be there every single time they wanted a better deal, right? And so you want always to be going to the office. And then of course she can literally be like, hey Isaac, what do you want? And you like, yeah. just tell them. But like, it's all through the office and they'll take it from them. Whereas with you, they think they can like finagle and like yeah, haggle. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, pricing should always come from the office, okay. right? And so you've heard me talk about this stuff. Like, yeah. like, like basically not giving them money, anything to do with money. You're just saying, hey, I'm taking hours and material costs. We could try to get the landscaping. Um, and then the office will send you a proposal for like a commercial maintenance or you know, for an estimate for like a landscaping job. Yeah. And it's all in the office, right? And then when they communicate, it's with the office. Okay. Number one, it makes you sound bigger. Number two, it's a third party close. Yeah. I'm sorry, but they have a policy. Yeah. Like, I use that all day long. I made the policy, but the, but the office has a policy that yeah. I can't do that, yeah. right? And so being able to use that is powerful. And when they call, they actually do talk to any of them. Like, oh, I was an office person here. Right. That's going to separate yeah. you from everyone else, right? Yeah. So, because um, everyone else is like, hey, just one second. I'm just finishing up this mowing route. I'll call you right back. Right? Like, <laughs> exactly, right? So um, I think that's, that can de definitely be done here. Okay, cool. I think in December you need to have an offsite meeting oh, yeah, with the I team. Can. It's gonna go end of year, go over your financials, go over with a plan for 2019, say, hey, we're gonna be hiring two more people in the next few months. I need everyone on the same page and what we're trying to do here. I'm gonna yeah. be, cause we're gonna be training. We just implemented Lawn Pro and like there's some changes here, like a bunch of changes we need to go over 
from like an operational standpoint and then from a mission standpoint, they, they gotta get on the same page. Cause if you got two new people coming in, you gotta get the four or five people that are solid with you, like yeah. on the same page, knowing what the mission is going forward, right? So I'm gonna help with that either this afternoon or whatever, yeah. um, as far as getting you like on the same page, them on the same page as you yeah. kind of thing. But then getting them on the same page is like what we're trying to do next year. I would do your financials for the whole year, mm -hmm. showing exactly what's happening, show them like what you've changed as far as like you taking us pay a, a set salary, even though yeah. it's hourly, it's totally fine. Like if you yeah. have an hourly rate in your head, that way like you feel like when you work, you work, like that sort of thing, like whatever it is, and just do a bank transfer. Okay. However you want to do that, but like making sure it's clear to them like what you're making, what the company, what, what you have, like literally you can say, hey, we got X amount of dollars, we're gonna be hiring two people. That's gonna cost money to train them, but like, we have some money here. What do you want to do with that? Do we want to put that into just marketing, growing the company? Do you think we really need equipment? Or then one of them literally might say this: You know what, boss? I'll take care of the equipment more. Like I'll really keep an eye on it because I know we can save yeah. that money and put it towards marketing, and grow the company. Like that's what'll happen. Someone will step up and be like, "That's when you know they bought in." Yeah. Right when they like, I'll take responsibility for that because I know it's better for the business and we'll be able to grow. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's what'll happen at that meeting. So I would do the offsite meeting, do it at a, a restaurant, spend a couple hundred bucks on them dinner, throw up a computer slideshow and walk them through financials, walk them through the goals of 2000. So you, you look back and you look, you look forward, right? So you say, 2018 review, 2019, what, what's gonna happen? Revenue goals, cause, and give them the revenue goals now, yeah. because then every single month they're gonna be like, are we hitting it? Yeah. Are we hitting it? Are we hitting it, right? And so then there can be something track dense, like, oh, we're behind, like we need to like, yeah. They'll start figuring stuff out. Like, okay. we need to hire someone, Isaac. Like, I found this other guy. We, I know we're behind, like, this month. Like, we need to get revenue up. I found this guy. I was talking to him. He's another mowing crew. Like, yeah. if they steal other people, it's okay. When you steal yeah. people, it's not. Yeah. But, like, um, so I think that's really important, right? Um, and then going to January, February, like, that's so far away. I don't want to worry about it too much. Like, these are the stuff we got to focus on. Yeah. Okay. But you just got to know when you're hiring more people, you, it means you got to be selling more. Okay. Right? By then, we would have worked on this, the... Uh, website a lot to fine tune it. Like yes. by January, the the, the website should be per, like beautiful. Okay. Videos, pictures of all the job sites. You have all that stuff. Yeah. It's just about making it look nice. Um, website's got to be beautiful, and then it's just sell, sell, right? So then then you can start driving Facebook ads or doing whatever. And at, at that meeting, it's like, hey, how much do we put into spring growth for advertising? If that's three grand, that's all you can do a lot with three grand on Facebook. Yeah. You know, door hangers, whatever it is, like three grand will get you a lot. So figuring that out with them, make sure they're on the same page and then implementing that in January, February is kind of important. And then you take that money, make a budget, what you're gonna do on those and what your goals are for each of those. Like a marketing plan kind of yeah. thing. I kind of think we did that on the webinar. Go ahead. We did put um, brand the trucks on here. When did y'all decide on that? Somewhere in here, I'd say. Like, I would say at the meeting, talk about it. Okay. At least, and then, you know. Yeah, it'd be fun to do it, like, either right at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, because then it'd be like, all right, this is for next year, you know. Go. I'd say yeah. January then. Yeah, at this meeting, point towards it, and yeah. they make them feel like it's a big change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something you can be proud of. Because they, they feel like everyone else out there, besides the fact they wear an orange shirt. Yeah. Right? They don't, they, like, from their standpoint, as an employee, like, yes, they have, like, the nicer office than anyone else does, things like that which is awesome, but like from their standpoint, you want to give them as much differentiation as possible. Right, okay, cool. So, cool. You know, I'd really recommend going forward in the next year, once you get these new people, have a weekly meeting. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm, I, you probably have something similar, like I, based on what, yesterday you had a meeting with them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but like have a set time every week where everyone gets together and then you, over the course of the, the week before, you keep track of the stuff you gotta talk about. Like, okay, this happened, what could we improve? But then you keep, wait, wait for that meeting. Yeah. And then integrate, they, they know we hash stuff out on Wednesday morning. Okay, yeah. Usually negative stuff, customer complaints, stuff like that. Yeah. But like, we hash it out, figure it out, people talk, and like, open it up. But okay. what if all your employees can't make it? Because... Record like, it. Okay. Yeah, just record it. Record it. So yeah. Because yeah. that's, we're always like, okay, well, no, yeah. Jake's Everybody's out of here, town. but Jake. Oh, right. Yeah, Jake's out of yeah. town. Make it, if you're gonna do a weekly, like, live by it like the Bible. A certain time every week. Okay. It doesn't matter if he's gone, you're gone. Doesn't matter. Still do it. Like, like they're gonna have one tomorrow morning, okay. right? Like it's Wednesday morning. It's seven fifty. They're having a team meeting. Right. It doesn't matter what's happening. If I'm gone, they're gonna have it. Whoever's do they show gone. up early for that, or do they always show up around seven fifteen? You all just start a little bit later. Well, you know, we usually start eight, but usually people get in there seven thirty ish, seven forty five, and then our team meeting is seven fifty. Yeah, and uh, then we video. Oh, so seven fifty. Yeah, fifty. Okay. Yeah, we start later. <laughs> We're no, lazy. No, I'm just I mean. 
we, we, soon we'll be starting at A2. Yeah, and then we video, we just live stream it to our other shop. So the other guys that are there, like right now there's not enough people at the other shop to have like two separate meetings. Next year we'll have to do that. Yeah. Because uh, it's just hard like, with the technology to stream it. But yeah. that's what we do right now. So there's a couple crews and a couple office people over there, they can stream it okay. and it's easy. Oh, good oh. stuff. Cool, man. I feel like I've just been like overwhelmed with the download information. <laughs> just start with that one thing, man. Yeah. All right. That'd be awesome. Man, it's funny that like, it's funny how like you can know things, but when you hear it from somebody else, how it just imprints on you. you yeah, know? yeah. Like, all this stuff that you told me today, honestly, like I've heard it in your podcast, I know I need to do it and stuff. Yeah. It's just like so much nicer to hear like Isaac, the one thing that you really need to focus on first is blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Website and uh uh getting employees. stuff to in India, yeah. And giving responsibility to India. Those are like the first three things that are easy to do and like I can knock them out really fast and it's like yeah. bam bam bam. Yeah. And then move on from there. So the next day we went back to the office and I wanted to really go over their estimating process and some of the software that they're using to really link between the office and getting new leads and new customers and then the estimating process that they use using software. And we talk a lot about Lawn Pro in this this sequence and this, this video coming up, but any type of software online, QuickBooks, uh, Service Autopilot, Lawn Pro, uh, so many there various different types of software, but the, the main purpose here is the systems and procedures that that software allows you to use to become more efficient and sell more jobs. So I kind of wanted to go over Lawn Pro stuff. Yeah. Um, and then to go over estimate process. Okay. Kind of how you're putting those together right now. Um, like right now, it's not a huge deal the estimate because if you get one, one a blue moon, mm -hmm. but once you start getting the leads coming in consistently, you gotta be able to pump them out. Yeah. Consistently and and like accurately, mm -hmm. right? So, um, like for instance, that call that you had with that guy, the one sixty five, like or the three hundred and sixty for the trimming. Yeah. Would did you basically see on site, make notes, and then? Yeah, I went there last week, and uh, he told me like what he wanted done, but he was with a client, so I couldn't really like chat with him or anything he was yeah. showing store jeans so um i just walked around i knew like we've done it a ton of times i know it'll yeah. take us like 45 minutes to trim the fence line yeah and then we gotta pick it all up and we don't even have to like get rid of it we can just chunk it in the woods because right. they're, they're next to a big forest got it and so and then the front stuff it would take like an hour with two guys at the most right you know? so do you when you say you made notes on that where are those notes they're just in my phone in, in your phone head. okay cool yeah. Like, so are they not attached to like their QuickBooks profile or anything like that really? No, no, right. no. Right. That's the one. That's why, yeah, that's why I'm excited for Lonco. <laughs> right. Jump in there and be like, okay, that's 15. Well, really, you're going to have to if she's going to get a hold of email and phone, right? Yeah. Because she needs to be able to take the call and be like, oh, yeah, Isaac was over there yesterday. It's going to cost 360 It's X amount here, right. X amount there. And what's nice is then next year when they ask for the same thing, you don't even have to go there again. Right. It's already in their profile, mm -hmm. right? And like right now, you can remember it. But once you get, like, as you grow, like, you, just, you can't remember all yeah, that information. Yeah. So like on estimates, for instance, if you send an estimate out now and they, they can accept right from here, it sends you an email back saying they've been, it's been accepted. Mm -hmm. So again, like we're eliminating that phone call. Mm -hmm. They can just click accept right from the estimate. Mm -hmm. um, what you'll want to play with is like your logo you can put on the estimate, mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? And then like go into settings and you can change estimate uh, um, settings, just like mm -hmm. random little stuff. 
but it's super nice because once the estimate's accepted, it's already on their profile. Like it's if you go in their profile, like someone calls it, hey, this is Bob. You go right, pull up their profile right, right away, right. see all their jobs, see the estimates that has been given, notes, like everything right it just away. Saves everything right there. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, like, would it be in here or where? So uh, like close that. Yeah, phone? click on their name. It does like a Whoa, mini. What is it? Yeah, so click. That? Yeah, there you go. That opens our whole deal up. Okay. So this would. I don't know why, would, she doesn't obviously have much information on her thing, but like all this stuff would usually be filled in. Like if she, if that information was there. Yes. And then they, now too, like people can go, log in through a cu uh, customer portal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like the customer portal is super cool too. Like from your website, you can create a link now or a button mm -hmm. that they can click on and go pay their payments, check their estimates, see all their past payments. What? Do people actually do that? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, once they get in the rhythm of it, like they 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 take a good like 6 months to switch over, mm -hmm. but once they start seeing in the bottom of their estimate pay with credit card and they click it, like that's game over. Right? Like it's just we getting them used to it. Card. Yeah, we had the QuickBooks where it just automatically pays every month. Right. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I yep. want every client to be like that. Yep, totally. <laughs> so like you don't have to think about it, it just Yeah, you can set up you can set up a uh, like uh, Stripe or PayPal, mm -hmm. as far as for them to pay with card and things. Mm -hmm. But as far as the portal, like people will use that because their estimate, when they click their estimate, it actually opens up their portal automatically. And then they, they have tabs, like they can see all their information, their okay. invoices, their estimates, their jobs, like everything mm -hmm. is right there for them. Okay. So, um, and then like automatic invoicing is basically if you set up recurring and you set up the pricing correctly, you enable that. Mm -hmm. And then you know it automatically Monthly. pumps out the invoices. So right. pretty much similar right. to QuickBooks. Yeah, this is just like QuickBooks. Yeah. Like on the twentieth, we always do that. <clears throat> yeah. So do you think we should do all the financials through Wanpro? Like, is it worth switching all that over when we said it already wasn't know? As, like, powerful, though. It's not as powerful in reports. Like, can we just send like estimates and stuff like that, and then just basically? make a copy of it or whatever an invoice and accept paying it through, it through QuickBooks and all that stuff. Or I can still send it. In. Well, it syncs now. I just have never used the sync. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So I'm, it's like supposedly it's really great. Mm -hmm. And like either way, it'll sync across. Yeah. Like we, when we did it, we just used Lawn Pro for yeah. reports, for everything. Um, and so, you know what? I'll pull you up ours. Because the Lawn Pro, it's one time you pay for it. So we still have our thing, right? All right, so this is obviously there's no upcoming events because we haven't used it for so long, mm -hmm. but um, da, da, da. so we had this is with, with several years ago when we, we still would switched over, but like this kind of like notes are important, just like property notes yeah. stuff like that. So we did it on everybody. Like you can see, like everyone has notes, literally. If they did anything with us, they had a note <laughs> um, because like if they call you can instantly pull up their name and know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they, like just really quickly without even clicking on the person's name, right? Yeah, they, so yeah, there used to be just customer leads and like something else like oh, inactive, yeah, yeah. Now like but now there's a whole categories. bunch of yeah. stuff, yeah. So what we did here, for instance, let's see here. Do you think it's worth categorizing it through all that crap? I just use Honestly, one or I was two. just like, yeah. I, was I just, just like, use a couple. It's nice because then what you can do is like send an email to say like 20 oh, people have I always see, used fertilization yeah. or, right? Mm -hmm. Like service autopilot is better at that, for instance, because we just add tags. Mm -hmm. So like any, if someone has a fertilization on their estimate, it automatically tags them as being like a fertilization customer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or like by, like for, so they might have five tags of different types of services. Right. But then when I want to send an email to people who have done fertilization, it'll send them to all those people. It's, mm -hmm. it's super nice. But this just isn't as powerful. But anyways. Um, so we'll open this bad boy up. So you can see on the here, okay, like this is how much they paid. They, so this is probably like, they did like one invoice with us ever, looks like. Mm -hmm. um, information, okay, two, two invoices. Yeah. And so what's nice though is it's, um, let's see if I can actually, yeah, this one's not very big. But you, like, if you connected Stripe, then they can run ACH or a credit card through here. Mm -hmm. So if you, if I would kept connect, uh, Stripe connected to here, you can put your ACH information, put theirs right in here, mm -hmm. save it, and then create where you just click enable automatic invoicing and build them mm -hmm. ACH. So you can also connect their credit card too and automatically charge them too. 
and keep them on file, kind of like QuickBooks too. Yeah. So it's all the same That's stuff. Good. It's just it's nice because it's all in one spot. Like mm -hmm. your scheduling, your invoicing, like everything. So I, I would do is do the sync and then see how much you use them. Okay. Right, because I just don't know. Like we used only Lompro. We didn't use QuickBooks. Um, but like this is the reports section. Profit and loss. So um, it's obviously not this year. Let's do 2016. So like yeah, the reporting function is not as as great. That's for sure. Um, 2016. Do we switch in 2015? I forget. We're about to find out. So it's like slow on reports. For instance, like this is gonna literally take 30 seconds. Um, and I don't know. It's it's not great. It's just not as far as reports. So like I would keep the sync and then see how much you use QuickBooks for reporting, okay. and then just make that call yourself, right? Right. Um, but it's like worth its weight in gold as far as the CRM and the scheduling. Yeah. As you can see, it takes its time. Still loading. Oh, yep. Um, calculators might be useful if so when you start doing a bunch oh, of yeah, mulch. I did notice that. I love the uh, the aerial pinpoint yep. calculator for yep. that area. Totally. That's awesome. Yeah. Same thing with mowing. If you ever start like charging by square foot or by acre. Yeah, yeah. I've been so. kind of like trying to. Uh, well, I'm not like too, super familiar with it or anything, but mm -hmm. I was trying to like do some of our jobs. I know how much we charge for them and how many like square feet they are, and just kind of figure out a price for square foot and see what that range is. Yeah, to do that, like basically what we did is we just take, you just take an Excel spreadsheet, you put all your customers square footage, mm -hmm. which you use the tool, and then price. And just literally put them on a bar graph and you'll, or a scatter plot. Mm -hmm. So you'll start saying, okay, these are the prices, like from, you know, 25 bucks a mo to, you know, 200 bucks a mo, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then here's the square footage and you can start to see that, like where the graph is kind of going and then create a perfect line and say, okay, if it is 12,000 square feet to 15,000 square feet, it's X amount. And like literally just follow that line, right? Yeah. Because literally, like this is down the road, but then literally they call, she does the scatter plot real quick and gives them a, an estimate right on the phone. And that's what we're doing now. Yeah, that's awesome. Like it saves so much time, especially for residential. So this is like 2016, for instance. Cool. You can see just a whole bunch of numbers. Um, so collected here. And so you can see, like this is way off because we haven't been here for two years. We did not make, we did not profit five hundred thirty thousand. I can promise you that. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can see, like it, it's decent, like as yeah. far as graphs wise and things. Um, but it's not going to compare to QuickBooks. So I would keep the QuickBooks sync and then just see if it if it's worth it, mm -hmm. because it should sync across like your your expenses, your invoices, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, as far as like your estimates, what's kind of the process? Like I know right now you kind of go there, get a number and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then I just like, just comes. yeah, I personally, I go check it out, talk yep. to the homeowner or business owner or whatever, figure yep. out what the need is. Um, all that I do off of, like based off time, yep. just like that. Um, now I'll do it by our new hourly rate that we're going for. Like, right, the 45. Least, yeah, at least 45 or $50 per man hour. Okay. Um, I think for... For mowing, that could be a little bit lower, but for like extra work, like tree trimming and stuff like that, it should be yeah. probably fifty bucks an hour. Right. So that's kind of what I've been aiming for now, and then, uh, and then like a lot of it. You, after you've done it so long, you know, you you know how long it's gonna take your guys to do right. it. Right. So I've just based it off that. Come back. Um, I can I can even do it on my phone pretty decently, but uh, you can just get on the on QuickBooks, app. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. literally just send an estimate right there to, right. Like right to the customer. Yeah, it's very similar with Lawn Pro. Um, and as long as you're doing it already through a system, it'll be easy to like switch over. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing is, is like as you grow, the notes on those estimates have to be more and more detailed, because yeah. now like you're not able to be there as much, and or, or even show them the job sometimes. Oh, so okay. like instead of just saying like install ten yards of mulch, you have to be like install ten yards of mulch includes the bed on the east side of the house, the one strip yeah. along the side of the driveway, and like explain it all. Mm -hmm. um, trimming X bush here and this bush here, and like you gotta get more detailed, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so that's when the notes start, like, I don't know if you're just doing like mulch and then a number and then trimming and a number, but yeah, like, it's kind of how basic it is. Right yeah. Now. yeah. If you're like, able I to go and look at it and know what it is. So yeah, and I'm usually there to oversee the job or yeah. at least I swing by just to make sure they're doing the right. Right. Stuff yep. Get started. So like this one, for instance, this was an estimate, pretty straightforward kind of cleanup sort of thing. So 
this is kind of how they set it, have it set up. It's nice, it's kind of like QuickBooks. You can see when it was sent, when it was viewed. Right. And then on their end, they can just click accept. There's like a button down at the bottom they can click accept. Um, but yeah, similar stuff. Oh, I like this, the recommended lawn treatments. Mm -hmm. I've tried to start throwing extra stuff in there. Yeah. The same thing, just at the bottom of the estimate. Like, yeah, the, this is two years ago, but you can see it, these numbers are based upon the weekly visit price that yeah. we've talked about in the course and stuff, right? So I already know, like, aeration's three times, mm -hmm. treatments are two times weekly visit price. So then what they, what the office can do is without you even telling them this upsell, they can give the prices. Oh, I see. I see. Right? Yeah. So the more price you can give someone, like, we can give... Based on someone's square footage, we can give them their mow price, their aeration treatments, lime, like everything. Mm -hmm. And then also um, what it would cost for, like, yeah, anything, grub control, like all of that stuff yeah. comes out of that square footage, which is a mow price, which is then calculates their price right. for treatments. So that is that. Liming is not popular down here. Really? Like, I literally finally just met a guy that was like, yeah, I lime my yard. And, like, he... Like, lime? we carry it, but I don't ever see anybody or hear about anybody it. selling it or using it. Yeah. So. Is what, here is weed it? control more important? Um, yeah. Yeah. So what is lime useful? Lime, so lime basically balances the pH of the soil and, like, neutralizes oh, okay. it, right? Yeah, yeah. So if it's really acidic or super basic, it just kind of neutralizes it. Right. And you can't burn the grass. You can dump it all day on. Yeah. It's fine. It's basically just ground up, like, limestone. Oh, okay. So it just brings the pH. And so a lot of times it'll neutralize, like, the coloring, too, of different patches. If it's mm -hmm. really patchy, like greens, like different colors of greens and stuff. And it's, like, yeah. not weeded. It's just, like, weird patches of green. Like, usually it's just pockets of, of like, um, like different elements in the soil that yeah, need to be neutralized. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But cool. Um, so I think, like, right now, like, a lot of your estimates really are the commercial stuff, right? Like is someone coming out, like yeah, a lot of like, our a lot of our upselling will still be residential. Gotcha. So, How many residential customers do you have? Like forty. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, like um, to increase that, you could even do door hangers around their properties. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like if they're tight houses, but like uh, a couple of them are. We don't have very dense routes, so right. That's something I'd like to work. On. Oh, cool! Very cool. Obviously, we'll. Oh, yeah, that's that's like legit. I like this. No, that's super cool. Wow. And then that d dollar amount, what? who's determining that? Is that you? Yeah. You drive so, by? Like, most of the neighborhoods that we were putting those in yep. are just cookie cutter yards and houses. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's all very much the same. Yeah. Right. Unless it's like a corner lot, it's $5 more. Gotcha. So kind of like base it and just go through and just tap can, the whole place. Can the crew members take these with them? They could, yeah. Because if you could I figure have, it out where I like... I did actually have them doing like every job that they would go to. For a little while, they would hang like three neighbors on each side. They would hang flyers on their doors, right? And then try to do it like every two weeks or so, or every week. Right. They would go. It yeah. Last very long though. We get distracted with other things. Well, yeah, you get busy, right? And yeah. just like stuff. But yeah, that's good. Like that's a great way to do it. Like we've never done it mm -hmm. as far as like making the crew hang at door hangers because a lot of times we're in HOAs. Oh right. And they won't allow us to. Like a lot of our work is in HOAs and. Um, like res residential that's gated off, right? Yeah, yeah, gated communities. So, um, but that's cool. That's pretty cool. I think too, once you start doing residential with your trucks being labeled up, mm -hmm. they'll start, start calling okay. too, right? Like if you get the number, website, like all that stuff rolling and you're driving around their property all the time, like now they have something to contact. Yeah, that's true. Right? So, cool. All right. And, like, take the process of the Lawn Pro switch slow. Like, it's super self-explanatory, mm -hmm. but, like, um, it is really important from the scheduling standpoint. Like, even if you don't use it for the financial side of things, yeah. um, being able to have a customer profile you pull up. Like, QuickBooks is good. Like, you could stick with it, honestly. It's really the only thing that, like, Lawn Pro is going to offer is the scheduling stuff and the routing. The scheduling and the routing. Right. That's like key. Yeah, because, like, if you go into uh, schedule... And then you go to the day. Uh, yeah, you go to today. It's gonna have your jobs. There's only two, so it's not a big deal. But then if you click, scroll up. Sorry. Oh, uh, calendar view. Oh yeah, the calendar view. Yeah. Oh sorry, routes. Routes is what you want. My bad. There you go. So yeah, oh, like right now there's like one yeah, or two. I, would, I hadn't figured out how to use the routes. Yeah, but yet. when there's like 20 of these, like, some of this becomes very valuable. Yeah. Sorry. And then sorry. click uh, click stop list. It's going crazy. And then. 
um, it'll show you like the list of, in order, and you can drag them around if you like know oh, cool, a certain yeah. you want it differently or whatever. Um, so this is an optimized list. So go route. So click not. Sorry, go not not optimized. Oh, okay. And then you can start. You should be able to start dragging them around. Oh, that's so be cool. Like, uh -uh. Oh. uh, no, sorry. Let's stop with there. You go. Now try moving uh -huh. them around. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, so cool. You just drag them around. But they did do motivators first, so. I'm excited to use it. Oh, how does it work on their phones? Does it work decent? Decent. Um, we never used it on our phones because okay. we were not up with the times yet. Um, but it wasn't as good an app either. Like his, his, the yeah. it's app, not an app, it's not an app. It's just like exactly. Yeah, it's just like, like a website. I'm seriously gonna like, uh, you know how the CEO or whatever they they message you after you buy the product. Yeah. I'm like, like, bro, make an app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, it's it's a pretty good. Sir, uh, interface for mobile though. Yeah. Like it's, it's all like large and like a lot of the stuff that you can't use. So yeah, it's, I've used it like just tested it um, yeah. the other day just a little bit. It's, it's a little glitchy but it's yeah. cool. Honestly, it works. Yeah. Honestly you could just try using it first the scheduling only mm -hmm. right? The thing is it's just so nice like if someone cancels and you cancel in Lawn Pro, it'll delete the rest of the recurring visits. Or like, yeah, that's nice. like, it's just so nice to be in one spot. So try the sync, I've never tried it. Okay. See if it's really good, then you could just, just literally just use Lawn Pro for the scheduling. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So, and if they're not used to having anything right now, they're probably not gonna be doing it on their phones very well. You might need to just print them off a, a route sheet. Mm -hmm. So you like, just- Right now, they can just look on their group text. Right, right. So. Mm -hmm. I know some of them, they like try to estimate like when they're going to be done for the day and stuff. Like, okay, if we do all these jobs, blah, blah, blah. last time it took us. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Because they want to make plans. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just it's like when, if you know, if you hire someone in September and you hire one in January and one in February, mm -hmm. when mowing season starts in February, all of a sudden, like, a third of your crew's never been to your properties. Yeah, exactly. Right? So they don't know the codes. They don't know, like, the gate things. They don't nothing like that. And they don't even know, like, what the fastest route is. Nothing. Yeah. Right? And if you get someone, like, we just hired someone that, like, completely new to the area and they have no idea how to get around yeah right so um it's valuable to have the route sheet for them yeah know exactly where to go they can just type in their gps question um do y'all have career leaders kind of not work? really like so we have project managers because really like we have like mowing crews mm -hmm. and they're kind of like all on the same sort of level yeah and then project managers for like landscape based project work and so we don't have mowing managers, really. Okay. I've like, never really heard you talk about that, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, like we we were th we've been playing with, and we might still have one like mowing manager for like to kind of like look after all mowing crews. That's cool, yeah. But like on the other hand, we really push the accountability on the individual. So like if they break something, yeah. they get the yellow slip. They have to talk about it at the team meeting, regardless of you know if they've done it for two years or yeah. two weeks, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess I ask you that because like. We always have groups of two or three guys, mm -hmm. and even four. So, like, we usually have one guy that's designated that he's trusted to, like, drive the truck, yeah. make sure his guys, like, do the work. It's his job to, like, look over everything last. Yeah. And, uh, and like, do the zero turn. Yep. So, otherwise, people are fighting over mowers. And, right. Like, all this stupid drama. Right. There's a balance. Like, there's a balance of having that. So it's, it's nice to be, like, accountable to one person. Yeah. And they're accountable to you. On the other hand, you want to make it where, like, they're not like, oh, well, the crew manager will take care of that. Or, like, yeah, you right. know, if I mess this up, it's his, like, the, he's gonna, it's going to fall on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, there's that balance. Like, Good if you, point. Yeah, I didn't think about if that. you have the, the culture of the, of the company in a certain way like that they should all be thinking like the like the like crew, crew lead crew right like they should be the they should all be looking at the job again mm -hmm. they should all be thinking about who's driving and like not about like one person driving but like who's what's the most efficient right like if someone right. finishes first they are the ones that should like gas everything up blow everything off and then like, hop in the truck right. right and get everything ready to roll so is there a balance because that's not as efficient either because it's hard for you to like put accountability on one person especially around a four like yeah. we only have ever done mow routes of two. We've never even done three. Yeah. So like, um, but like the properties that you're doing, it makes sense to have four. Yeah. yeah it yeah. does. So, um, but you also have two trucks. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played with the idea of doing one, but you don't have a big enough trailer, do you? Like one guy. One truck. No, one truck. Just one truck for all the jobs. Instead of doing the two that follow each other. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's just. I guess that's just habit because they drag all the extra equipment around because right. like all the 
the equipment has places on the right, racks. So right. there's only three trimmers and three blowers per trailer. Gotcha. And then it'll hold like maybe two zero turns. Dang. And so like today they always take an extra the extra truck because it has all the other equipment. But yeah, they'll take one truck if they go far. Right. Like whenever they go down to yeah no, because like. When we go down to post with the HOA that we mow, yeah. they take two rigs too, but uh, it's because like after we do all the parks and stuff, there's like there's like 12 or 15 cul-de-sacs that you gotta go do. Right. And there's like different sections of the neighborhood. So we have one truck go do this section and we have the other truck of like, they both just have two guys yeah. in each truck and they go do each section of the neighborhood. And then we have a couple houses in the neighborhood that we've got over time. That, yeah. They knock those out too. So when you when you get a new person, how do you expect them to kind of like, for instance, that property is talking about the cola sacks, fifteen cola sacks on random properties. How do you expect them to know that? Like, is it just basically they're with the other three guys that are experienced? Yeah, like so that's where our, the hierarchy of like the crew leader comes in. So gotcha. Like every truck would would have a crew leader, mm -hmm. so it's their job to like. They're usually the more experienced one. They've been around a little longer, and they know the jobs. Yeah. So they'll know automatically what. Cold sacks you got to so you, you could stick like some newbie with the crew leader and they'll they'll do fine as long as they can weed eat and mow and do right. what they need to do to help then uh it's just the crew leader's job to like lead the team right mm -hmm. and so he gets paid more because he's driving the truck he has more responsibility and they, more is expected of him and he's leading another guy yeah so that's kind of how we did that and it kind of gives another level to work up to it's like okay i just got hired on making 12 bucks an hour at weed eat like i could be a crew leader it doesn't look that hard mm -hmm. you get paid like 15 17 dollars an hour yeah, yeah. and uh, so it's kind of like also it just looks good for people that are starting out it's like okay well if you're if you catch on really quick like you could become a crew leader like we're going to need another crew leader coming on yeah for, to drive our third truck soon yeah so you could work up to that yeah and then depending on how much effort they want to put in they can get there faster or slower right. so. yeah and uh, that that's totally works and it's great mm -hmm. the problem is when you get 200 properties yeah. Like, then what happens is you have a manager, but he hasn't been to all the properties like for the, a few weeks, right? Go for it. Yeah. Right. So like, it just gets hey. tough. If you're able to make the notes on each property. It's super helpful. Like, even if you yeah, start making yeah. them and not using them now, just to like put it in writing, mm -hmm. so that like if for some reason two of your manager like leaders are gone and you're stuck with like two newbies that know yeah, how to mow yeah, but yeah. don't know the properties, they can get around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so. Yeah, I love the idea of the I think 100% we should do that. Yeah. As the guy says, if I died tomorrow, I have to leave this in hands that like anyone can figure Dude, it out. Dude, if I right. die tomorrow, this company would go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really, if he had notes and he died tomorrow, they would know this right. is the code, this is what we do here. Yeah. Continue on. Yeah, basically everything. For <laughs> yeah. As, as you like, as you grow, like, you just gotta start thinking like, um, whatever's in your head needs to be on paper. Okay. And not just paper, but like it needs to be known throughout the company. Right. So like I have, I've created like a a guide. Like literally, if I got hit by a bus, they'd see all passwords. They'd know banking information. They'd know everything that I can't share with them or like whatever. They yeah. don't need to know now. But then on the, on the other flip side, it's like every single day is like, okay, how am I doing this estimate? How do I create a system? Like you know this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like how do I create a system that anyone could do this? And just like within two days, they could pick this stuff up. Right. right? Um, but like the notes for jobs is super important. Yeah. Because like if you lose two or three guys at the same time, like you did again, like if, you, if that happens again, then you're just, yeah. and then now you're. We had guys that did still know the job. Right. But you're yeah. right. Like if we had to hire new guys on that didn't know the job, it's like, oh crap, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the more you can get notes, the better. Okay. Right. Like it works. Like I still remember up until about 70, 80 clients, like residential. I was like, I knew every single person, their note, like what they wanted on each property. But then, like, you send someone else out and they, for, like, you forget to yeah. tell them or, like, whatever. And then it's just a yeah. bomb. I mean, it's a gong show. So, um, but um, I wanted to kind of just make sure, like, you, like, the two of you, I think, is the most important thing of the company, really. Like, the, the relationship between the two of you and the trust there, mm -hmm. like, it really is. Like, um, having a strong number two is what's going to get you to a million. That's, like, hands down. Yeah. Like, we can talk about a website and sales and all that. But, like, if you don't have a strong number two, like... You're nothing, right. like really. And and as you get, you know, as you actually get better, mm -hmm. you just realize that you're really nothing without the team. Yeah. And so, especially as you do like flatline and you do teach them everything and you let them run with the ball without like watching over their shoulder all the time, you realize that like it really isn't about 
us as like the owner yeah it's just we're just like on the sidelines coaching and like cheering people on yeah and so so like really like that's what's gonna get like everyone stops around 30 to 40 grand like this is like the place everyone stops yeah. because it's kind of like I see why it's kind of hard to get past it's comfortable yeah. like you know all the jobs yeah. you Pretty don't have to have funny. a lot of, yeah you don't have to have a lot of systems yeah right you don't have to rely on a, like you do all the sales you do all the other stuff mm -hmm. and you just have like a sidekick to help you when there's a bunch of other extra stuff in yeah. the office mm -hmm. um and so there's that jump, like, but like you have to make it if you want to get if like if your goal is a million, mm -hmm. you have to get over that. Like, like I can't emphasize that enough. And so like the first step, like I was saying yesterday, is like everything's got to be on India as far as like trust and like that is like the most important thing. Yeah. Right. And so like the 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 relationship and like the connection I have with Liz mm -hmm. and the amount of trust there is what made us jump the past two and a half years oh, that she's worked. Your sister? No, she's my aunt, actually. Oh. Yeah, so um, she's quite a bit older than me. But uh, it just, it, like, you work together, you're going to have disagreements. And the more you work together... Yeah, like, since my sister, I fight with her, and she's going to, like, call me out on crap. Yeah, like, like the thing is, though, like, uh, you're going to have disagreements. As the company gets bigger, and, like, you're giving more responsibility to her, and then you'll, like, want to step in and get in... Uh, it happens to me still, man. I'll want to get in on her, like, business. Yeah and like try to make something more efficient right. when they figured it out and I just need to shut up and let them do their thing. Yeah. And then when I do step on their business and something messes up, it's my fault. And like right. they get kind of mad and like we still have like very passionate debates. Mm -hmm. Very like they're like the office assistants, assistants, like when they were starting, they were like taken back at like we will get not like mad yeah. or not mad. We are debating what's right for the company, right? Yeah. And we'll get and that's really that's the fine line between like we want to like a great culture and like yay we're all like friends and family yeah. like la 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 and like you know sing song and kubaya. But like on the other hand, like if we are like we're passionate enough to like really get you know um, you know argue over stuff yeah. and that's totally fine. Like, I know, like, the family dynamic's different, but I kind of kind of had that with Liz, but, like, she's my aunt, so it's different. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you're, like, brother and sister, right? Yeah. So there's a little bit of, like, that all going on, so you know each other really good, yeah. which can get, like, really crazy when you do get in an argument because then you have all sorts of artillery that you can pull out of the bag. Yeah. But, like, on the other hand, um, you have the trust thing, like, in the bag. Yeah. And so you're leagues ahead of someone else that's just, like, hiring someone else out, mm -hmm. right? So the trust thing is the biggest thing, and you got that. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is just, like, being able to challenge each other. Like, okay. India should be, a, like, no whim, like, whim to be like, hey, that's not right, or, like, we should try this, mm -hmm. or, like, a yeah. marketing. And you, she could be way out to lunch, yeah. but you need to explain to her why, right? And it's good for us as an owner to have to explain why. Because, like, mm -hmm. right, the problem with being an owner is we can dictate everything, mm -hmm. And it happened exactly as we said, and be completely wrong. Yeah. Right? Sure. Because if you don't create checkpoints, like people to like question what you're doing, mm -hmm. like you'll just run the thing into like oblivion if you're not doing the right stuff. Yeah. So even if people are questioning you incorrectly, you at least have to like defend your decision, even yeah. if it's correct, right? Yeah. So if marketing, um, hiring someone, if she says not to hire someone, like really look at that. Yeah. Like true. I've already said, like if I, I tell like Liz, it runs everything through Liz. If they, she says no, or there's a question, I don't hire. Even if I'm like, yeah, like that would be yeah. a good hire. Um, if she says no, like you should almost like really look at it as almost a partnership in the regard, like she has veto power yeah, yeah. over like a hire, like especially a hire when you're this young, like a bad hire can fry you. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you'd rather grow a little bit slower than get like a one just rotten apple that's gonna come in here and like talk bad about you behind people's back yeah. like you don't want that garbage and if it's happening just like instantly fire people yeah like um when you're this small like it's not like we're crazy big or anything but when you when it's like five six people like something like that can like flip a company yeah right seriously. um you know with us like we we've had bad or two at one or two apples but like when you have 15 plus people it's like okay that's like four percent of the population here mm -hmm. gone right so um but like I like I said, like I think the most important thing is the two of you, yeah. and really think like bounce stuff off of her from a business standpoint. Like obviously she's in school, and yeah. it's great experience for you. Like you're not gonna get what you get here at a business school if he can give you the opportunity to make some decisions, mm -hmm. and like even involve you in decisions. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna get in business school. I took my MBA, and like I learned more in a couple weeks of running my company than like I learned about <laughs> finance of and course. junk, right? Yeah. So like it's really valuable for you, I think. And I think it's more valuable the more you can include her in decisions for her, but also for you and the business, mm -hmm. right? Like to just like bounce everything off of her. 
like marketing ideas, estimate ideas, like ethical stuff with customers, with employees, like that's really important. Yeah. Um, and you'll feel, you'll like, yeah, it's, it's just a weird thing when you start letting go. You yeah. gotta start letting go. And that's why no one gets over like the 500, 600 mark. They just kind of like, they kind of just bump there for a long time. And they just like, okay, we'll stay here forever. Yeah, yeah. Because they can't let go. Because you're juggling all the balls and you're doing a good job of it. And you're like, I can handle this. And then, oh, but, no, it's definitely getting to me, but, yeah, but any bigger, you have to start letting yeah. it, let it go. Right. And the more you can delegate, the better. And from now to a million, you're not going to make, you're not going to make any more money. Yeah. That's the thing, right? You just have to realize you got to get you like through that part. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and you want it to make it, make it where if you get hit by a bus, it really does keep going. Yeah. Right. And so that should be like theme as you grow. Like that's another stage. You're not like there yet. I wouldn't yeah. be worrying about systems for when you die and things, but like, um, but but like that's where you get once you get a million. Now all of a sudden you have like ten, fifteen people, and they have families, and then you're like hiring every single month. Mm-hmm. Like that's you know you gotta have systems for hiring if you're hiring every month, right. right? And so whether that be like okay, there's gonna be an interview, and then there's gonna be a written thing, and there's gonna be a resume, and then they're gonna come through India, and then they're come yeah. through me. Like do you do a phone screen? Like how does that work, right? Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times it's like oh, I just want good people to hire them. Like, I want to snatch them up right away in this labor market. On the other hand, it shows, proves to them just how little you care. Yeah. Right? If you're just like, oh, you're great. You serve my, co- my coffee really well, and I'm, I'm going to like you, and we're gonna come work for me. Yeah. Like, that's nice um, as an introduction point, but don't hire them so fast. Mm-hmm. Like, they just realize that you're just kind of like, you're just like, whatever. Yeah. When you really bring them through the ringer, you'll weed out all the, the, the people who don't really care. Yeah, I would love more of a ringer. Yeah, so, like... Yeah. Like, that, that can be a second person, though. Yeah. Right? Like, most of the people who work for me until an orientation day don't know I'm the owner. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Like, until orientation day when Liz starts, like, yakking and selling to them, mm-hmm. um, they don't know I'm the owner and, like, what we're doing. So, I'll come in there and be like, oh, my, initial, my initial talk with them is like, hey, we'll get back to you. The office will get back to you. Again, third party. Like, I'm not yeah. involved. The third. Because if you know you're not going to get back with them then it's not on you either. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, the office will go back to you if they want to get, you know, if they want more information and then we'll have another interview. And so um, this is a great place to have interviews. Yeah, I know. It's pretty professional. Like, um, and then they just have to realize that, hey, like th- we're not going to have this over at our shop or things. Like, but this is where we're going. You got to sell them. If they're good, you got to sell them. If they're like average, you'll get them on for a year or two and like, that's great. But if like, they're great, you're going to have to sell them on why yeah. they, they've got to stay here instead of the oil place, Yeah. right? Like, that's that's the thing, for them to realize that they can make more here or, like, there's a future here for them. Right. You know? Yeah, and that's why I want to start building. Like, our company is to the point, like like you say, the tipping point to where, mm-hmm. like, we can start supporting people and paying them better and, like, yeah. actually build a career out of it. Yeah. Like, before, it, would, it felt hard to sell that to people knowing that the company was a lot smaller. You know? Yeah. I think that December team meeting is going to be super important yeah. for you to retain the guys that you have right now. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you have six of them right now, right? Yeah. So I'd say if you, are you thinking four by then? Is that, like, or I know one's leaving. Yeah. Uh, yeah, four or five. Right. Um, so. We don't hire anybody else. Yeah. So, like, if you get, you know, one person now, and then January, February, you're probably going to be looking at seven, eight people maybe. Yeah. Um, but having them all on board is going to be super important. Like, um, you're not just hiring people for any reason. Like, there's a goal. There's something we're trying to get to, right? And then tracking that. We got to go. Cool. All right. Before we left Texas and we left IMCO, I really wanted to speak with the entire team and all the employees that work for Isaac and really try to get them on the same page. Sometimes it just helps to have a third party come in and say the same thing they've heard before, but from a different, you know, not the owner. And so I wanted to kind of get them together. I felt like they were at a certain place as a team and and as a unit that they could take what I was about to say to them and really try to bring them together, unify their vision behind and really rally behind what Isaac was trying to do with the company. So no, I just wanted to connect real quick because I probably won't see you guys again tomorrow. I don't know whether or not me, Josh will with the camera. But um, no, I, so basically Isaac was uh, in our course. I have an online thing and then I have a podcast and stuff talking about landscaping and the business side of things. And so uh, he was one of the two that we just came out for a couple of days and kind of help him as much as he can. And so, you know, after being with him even today and last night and stuff, like he's a great guy and you guys are growing a, like, a good thing here. Um, and I think the big thing, the big takeaway is he wants to grow it a lot more. Right? He wants to make it a place where people can actually build a career here and not just be like 10, 12 bucks an hour. 
And so, you know, my, 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 what I would love to see, because I know what, I, I was exactly where you guys are at less than two years ago, like two years, two and a half years ago. So Josh was like my sec, third employee and less than two years ago, it was him, my office manager and me. And so now we have like 18 people, um, you know, growing, we got two more people coming. Like there's just a bunch of growth, right? But you gotta create the systems and stuff. And the biggest thing really to do that is gonna be getting Isaac out of like day-to-day -day operational stuff. As far as like answering the phones all the time, answering emails all the time, and really allowing him to go sell and go after new business. And you know, like, well, how does that affect me? Like at the end of the day, if he can create a company that's large enough, it's a place that you can grow into. So today we talked a lot about like, how do you grow into landscaping and not just mow, blow and go, right? And really differentiating yourself from all the other trucks we saw today um, yeah. that are just like mowing, right? And so, um, and I was talking about with like Isaac today, India, like really the, the, big, the big difference and the big difference between you and all the other people, a big part of it's India, as far as like his second in command. And so I'm really pushing Isaac to give more leadership to her as well as you guys and more like say in what's going on. Uh, because if he's doing it all the time, it's gonna be a big bottleneck as far as like decision making, growth, like all of that stuff. And so like in our company, I'm the, like one of the youngest people there. And so it's kind of natural for everyone to like challenge what I'm doing and like disagree and all of that stuff. And I encourage that here. Like it's not a bad thing. You all are on the same team. You're all trying to get the ball down the court. Um, and so to, to be able to help him from like, hey, like we could do this better. Or like, this is wrong, we should try this. Or even like he tries a marketing thing, it's like, that's not gonna work, we should try this. Like challenging him is a good thing. Yeah. Like, um, so I, I, really, I would really, really like to see you guys like really, I, I talked to India today, like taking stuff off of his plate, is that, that concerned? Like, Honestly, he cannot grow the company to where it needs to be if he's sharpening blades at 11 o'clock at night. Like, it's just not possible, right? Like, looking for areas like, okay, maybe I could do this to, like, take that off his plate. And it's not just to make him, like, go take a vacation. He needs to go sell. We talked yeah. about it today. To, like, if he wants to make a place where he can get a project manager, he, like, he can pay someone 20 bucks plus an hour, like, you've got to build growth and systems and things like that. Mm -hmm. And to be able to support a family with the wages that he's paying and benefits, like all that comes, but there's gotta be an infrastructure and like money to pay that stuff, right? And so that's what I'm focusing on with him because like his goal is a million in revenue, right? And so right now he's just under 500, so he's like halfway there. And so whether or not that takes five years or one year really depends on the systems that you guys kind of create internally. And so we've been talking about that from a sales standpoint, creating a website, putting logos back on the trucks, like all of that sort of thing, like generating the sales aspect from the website and things like that. But internally is really important. Um, as India take, takes you know, more responsibility off of him, as far as from emails and office and things like that estimates, you guys can do a lot of the same stuff in the field, right? And, and I guarantee you he's, that's the person he's gonna gravitate to for like a project manager. As we started talking today, like softscaping, hardscaping, getting more involved in whether it be retaining walls or paver patios, that stuff like is all you can you can learn all that stuff. Um, but it just starts like it's small. Like this isn't like anything amazing. And, like you guys are in, like this little place it seems, and it's like we just kind of come here to work. But like if you can really buy into the vision of what he's trying to do, it can be pretty powerful. So like we talked today, like probably in December you guys are gonna have like a like a team meeting yeah. and go over the financials. So like we done it in our company, I really pushed Isaac to do the same thing as just have an open book policy with you guys. You guys know where the money's at, how much money you guys got to like play with and grow, and then like make decisions together. As far as like, should we get some, like is the Toro that bad? Should we like just go jump the thing off a cliff and get a new piece of machinery? Or like maybe we can fix it and like use that two, three thousand dollars towards, you know, some more marketing. And so, yeah, like, like I said, I think Isaac's a great guy and you have a, you're a great leader. I'd support him like, however, like if you want to, I think there's a future for you here, whether it be project manager, landscaping, et cetera. And like I've talked about him today, your guys is like are competing with the oil companies and like electricians and like all these other trades. And so with the labor market, the way it is, we've got to create businesses that can support someone and keep them away from that. Not keep them away from it, but pay them better, give them a better environment and place that they want to stay at. And so that's what he's trying to create. And it's not like by getting to a million, like we talked about today, he's not gonna make a single dollar more in his pocket until he gets a, 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 over a million. Like the next 500,000, the next like big growth, you don't make more money as an owner, you don't. 
Um, and so he's willing to put it back in the company, put it back in wages to keep people. Um, and so that's a conversation he has with you guys. But I just wanted to say that like, I know where he's wanting, wanting to get. It's kind of like where we're at now. And it's not far away if everyone buys in. Yeah. And so I'd really push you guys, if you, like, if you want to make this like a career, you can make it here as like a project manager and it just gets bigger, like estimated, like that all comes. And so I'll help him as far as how to do like, the sales side of things, website, cause you gotta have like the, the generation of leads coming in um, to make interesting work and things like that. But I'd really, um, I'd encourage you guys just like really buy in. Like whether, like literally if you should, if you have like a, a way you can improve the company, like save yourself five minutes in the morning, like all that stuff is super important um, to like kind of just give it your input. Right. So that's all I had to say. But um, thanks for letting us like dink around for a day. It was fun. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. So. so we might come by the y'all some more tomorrow too. Okay. So Sounds good. We're probably going to show them some more jobs and then uh, they'll do some more video and stuff. So look your best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like I, like I, I was talking with um, Isaac today, like it should be really easy to be able to like challenge each other on stuff. Whether it be Isaac or like someone you're working with, um, we're working on this on, like in our company, like be, being able to like take criticism and give it, and like no one be hurt. Like we all are trying to accomplish the same thing. That's like get better, make the company better, and so to be able to like go up to someone and be like, "Yo, you're edging on that. Was pathetic. Like, come on, seriously." Um, and then them take that as like a pause, like, "Hey, they're trying to help me here yeah. and make me get better." Same thing with him. Challenge him on all the stuff he's doing. Yeah, I, I, I welcome that. I love when people challenge me because I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the ideas. Like, people see things differently than I do. So, yeah. I welcome it. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, I know you guys are crazy hired. I have to work on that heat, my goodness. So, have a great evening. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see. So. Good. All right. After being with Isaac and the entire crew at IMCO, I feel very positive that they're going to make that next step. Several steps within a landscaper's kind of journey to becoming a successful entrepreneur. The first one is hiring your first person. Isaac had already done that when he bought the business as a young man. He already had a, enough clients to have employees. So that step was already taken. The next step is really what they're working on right now, and that is getting Isaac out of the field. No longer mowing lawns, trimming trees, raking out mulch, and really focusing on the business, making sales, really working with India to create those systems from the office's st standpoint. And so I feel confident that with the team that he has in place, he's, he'll be able to do that by creating those systems and those procedures and really focusing on sales because that's what's going to propel him to get over that million dollar marker for the, his annual revenue and that's really what his goal is that's what he's shooting for and in order to do that he can implement some of the things we talked about over the course of the past couple days being with him and really take his business to the next level so stay tuned on the next episode we're going to be taking another step further in the entrepreneurial journey of a company that is already out of the field but really need to create systems and procedures to become an efficient business that actually makes a profitable margin every single month. Stay tuned. This is Mike Andes, LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. If you haven't already, check out LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. I'd love to see you at the conference in January. If you're watching this and you'd like to see more and you'd like to see your business get some of the, the tools and resources, come check out the, the conference. It's coming up in January 2019. I'd love to see you there.